that double set, like no one had ever ollied in, and no one but him had ever ollied. Dude, and it's in that... San Diego where all the heaviest hitter dudes would ever jump down anything. I was just telling camera I drove by this spot uh, yesterday. Ugh, that run up sucks. Dude, what an ender. Mm. Yes, that's quite the ender. Yeah, quite the ender. right. Welcome to About That Ender. Thank Mike, you. Mike Rafter. Thanks for having me, man. I've been watching your show. It's a lot of fun. That's awesome to hear because yeah. uh, I'm fanning out a little bit right now, too. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, just to get it out of the way, mm -hmm. um, uh, I used to watch you guys at Sutter. We were at Sutter a lot. As was I, um, as a Grom. Did you go to Sutter? I did go to Sutter. I went to Sutter. Yeah. Uh, how old are you? 43. Yeah, so I'm 34. Okay. Okay, so you guys were quite a bit older. Yeah. Um, and I used to see all the dudes, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like that was our spot. All the dudes. And that, and that, even before I went to Sutter, that's where we that's where we skated. Mm -hmm. Um, direct bus route there. Yeah. Never got kicked out. Ledges for days, smooth ground, Dude, covered. I, yeah, Come on. like it checks so many boxes for for <laughs> to have that smooth ground and to have it in the shade in Sacramento. It's like where where would you rather be in the summertime? Right. Like let's even, just go in, play skate for six hours. Even in the winter, summertime, mm -hmm. wintertime, wherever. Yep, it's good to go. It's super cool. I love that super spot. Cool. So the um, the principal at Sutter, his name was uh, Mr. Purcell. Yep. All of those years that it was okay to skate there was because that guy just was a cool dude. Yeah, you say cool dude. Oh, what happened? I say not cool dude. Damn. Well, okay, no. All right, sorry. Yeah, that's coming and doing demos there and shit. Let me. I remember. <laughs> I remember. I was there while you guys did the demos with the uh, the big launch ramp over the car. Yep. I went to school there while you guys. Okay, that's so, crazy. So I'm fanning out a little bit right now. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, okay, so uh, Mr. Purcell was the 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 principal there. He might have been a cool dude, mm -hmm. but for me, I got a bad rap because he was also the principal for my older brother at Wilsey Wood. Oh, previously. Previously. And my older brother like, did not, this dude. my brother did not <laughs> <laughs> set a very good uh, road for me. Uh, so as soon as he saw my last name, he goes, do you have a brother? I said, yeah. I said, oh. Asked me, you know, I said, I said, yeah. He said, oh. And then just kind of walked away. I said, oh, shit. And he, dude, he did not like me. That sucks. He did not like me. That sucks. Oh, anyways, moving on. Okay, so, um, yeah, so that's how uh, I first came in uh, contact with you was through uh, through Sutter. You guys did the demos there. I, you were just like known to, to me and my group as like the pro out of SAC, like one of the first pros out of SAC. And then after you came the the mats. Uh, <laughs> all, all the all the mats, you know. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, and Definitely then you know, Beeble, Stefan, like mm -hmm. the they trailed after you, but yeah. you were like the pro, like the guy who was like pro to your to your generation. to my group, yeah, yeah, to my generation, my group. Um, we were just like, dude, that guy, that guy's pro, <laughs> like you know. And there weren't a lot of pro skaters exactly. at that point total. Exactly. So it, yeah. I, I mean, I was listening to something you guys uh, talked about. Not that long ago, I think it was in Jeremy's uh, episode. Um, he said, "Like, like, how do you how do you get to, you know, how do you how do you get somewhere in skateboarding?" And it's just like, man, he see you see so many people that are really great at it that don't go anywhere with it, and it's just just don't kook yourself, like, yeah. And I I feel like I was never a I was never a super good skater, but I made a lot of friends. Like I just made all the right friends everywhere I went. And then one day I was just like, oh. Weird, I'm a pro skater. <laughs> How did that happen? It's because I wanted to make a lot of friends. Well, and you seem to be just a genuinely nice dude. I hope so. So far. I mean, the, yeah. even though I've uh, met you before, been around you, skated with you, or around you before, you know, we never really, you were the pro. So it was like, <laughs> you know, we watched and courteous, but you don't like, don't go try to talk to him. No, you didn't cook yourself, did you? No, because you, I, you <laughs> dude, don't be, don't be a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? And that's how my group my, was. You see the pro, you see a pro, you see, don't go fucking, don't go ask him for something or like go try to talk to him. He doesn't want to fucking talk to you, dude. He's a pro. <laughs> that's like, was our mentality. You know what I mean? Like that's, well, because for kids who are listening now, pros are everywhere. You meet pros, they're cool, you know? Yeah. But in the 90s, pros were, Mike Vallely, mm -hmm. you don't fuck with them. You know what I mean? Like they were dudes that were on yeah. another level that were very tight knit because like you said, there weren't very many of them. Right. So when you see them, they're usually with other pros and will tell you to fucking get the fuck away from them. 
most, there were most of the time. Most of the time. You know what I mean? There Sometimes some you'd hear about, oh, yeah, this pro like uh, totally gave me a board. Like that would be the nice story that you'd hear about pros yeah. is, oh, this dude, like uh, he didn't want his board anymore. So he just like gave it to me. A dude, dude, sick. But literally that pro just like, hey, bro, you want a board? Threw it at him and left. That's how it was. That's the interaction with pros and regular kids were, I guess, you know. Um, and that's why guys like uh, Carl Watson made such a name for themselves because those that would be a dude who would like sit down and talk to you. And dude, you're like, it really stands out. You're like, oh my God, a pro, talk to me. It's his name Carl Watson. He's, and so, how many times yeah. have you heard that Carl Watson did yeah, that? Exactly. You know, like yeah. again and again and again, that was the guy. Yeah. That, but, but he was one of the few pros that you heard stories like that about. Most of the time it was like, I saw a pro. Mm-hmm. Or oh, this pro like fucking punked me basically, mm-hmm. like got me the f- told me to get the fuck out of the way or leave me leave me alone or whatever. You know? Yeah, like yeah. So, anyways, uh, you you know you you were uh, you were the the guy. Okay, so for us growing up, that was that. And then uh, we came back in contact briefly at Epic, uh, and I feel this is a story of one of a random story that just like sticks out in my head because I kind of I was a little embarrassed by it. Not mm-hmm. gonna lie. You were checking in for to skate. You were just giving me your last name, and the, if you weren't at Epic, the way it works, you walk in, you give them a last name, first name. We, you say how many hours you want, give them wristband, you go skate. Uh, you came in and you were like, said your last name, Rafter, all right, you know, Mike. And I just, I was, it was busy, so I had my head down. I'm just typing in names, just going, moving, and you said Rafter, and I like, and like looked up and was like, and at the time, it didn't register to me like. Oh, Mike Rafter, that guy, the pro. I just, I heard the name. I was like, I know. I was like, and I think I said something like, hey, you, you were somebody, right? Like you, like, I know, I know, I know you. And you just like looked at me like, oh, yeah, I guess I was somebody. <laughs> well, in, in honesty, like that, by that time, I wasn't a pro skater anymore. Yeah, but still, I'm like, oh, you used to, you used to be somebody, right? Like, I was hey, probably bro. there filming Stefan. Like, I'm still somebody, you know, I, I exist, bro. Yeah. <laughs> But I just remember being super embarrassed by like that. Cause then after you, after I checked you and left and then it, it was like, that's how I know that guy, I'm uh, like, you know? And then I was like, damn it. I could have just been like, what's up. <laughs> <laughs> um, off like for a good long time. Um, there was a, there's a period of time where no one knows who you are anymore. Um, yeah. and it starts I, for a lot of people. I think it starts like five years after you've kind of, totally stepped out of the scene yeah and what i would think would be really fun sometimes is to just figure out like like oh like if i go in a skate shop and want to buy something like like is this person gonna know who i am how much time has passed yeah um or how long have they been around or how long have they been around? I mean, you can almost tell about how old they are yeah and i would always I, I let me preface this by saying why it was interesting i used to not be able to have honest conversations with people in certain places because there is that thing at one point where they're like, oh, you're Mike Rafter. Oh, okay. And I'm not, I wasn't a big celebrity. I was a 90s pro skater. Like, what, 10 people knew who I was. But <laughs> it, 10 people everywhere I went knew who I was. So it was like, you go to a skate shop, maybe you just want to like, like, what is it like to be a regular person? And they want to like get something from you they, they or wanna, yeah, utilize, like, utilize you in somehow. Some way. Yeah. Or they just want, I don't know, maybe they just want to be talking to somebody they saw. one. It, it's yeah. probably totally cool. But it was really fun to watch that stuff fall away and to be able to like go and like go into a skate shop where kids are watching the TV screen and watching the skate stuff and they stay paying attention to that. Yeah. And you get to just be like, you don't see the whispers or anything. Yeah. You know, or like go to the skate park and like there used to be a point where I go to the skate park, everyone sits down. <laughs> um, yeah. Or you go to the skate like, and then there was another awkward point where you go to the skate park and everyone's kind of like, this dude's still, or it's only in my head, <laughs> but I was like, oh, are they waiting for me to do something? Like, do I have to do the hard flip or whatever? Like, yeah. someone's going to fucking ask me today if I'm going to switch hard flip this thing. Like, don't fucking ask me that. <laughs> yeah. I just want to fucking cruise, bro. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I just want to disappear. Um, I can see that. I can, and I, I, can and I can't that. imagine what those feelings are like for people that had like stadiums of people like shouting their names or knowing who they were. This is, I'm like on the micro level. Yeah. And I still was uncomfortable. Yeah, I couldn't imagine somebody who was on that. I can't I mean I can't think of anybody, but somebody who was like on that level of stardom and then fell off, and now mm-hmm. nobody really knows. The pressure's that. crazy. <laughs> the pressure's got to be crazy for people, dude. I mean, guys like uh, Vanilla Ice. Yeah, 
he's not a skater, but just throwing him out there. Like if you saw him, you probably wouldn't really recognize him. I mean, necessarily, unless you like were a huge giant fan and or watching his like reality shit now or whatever. But like if he walked through a a, a room or whatever, nobody would stop. I, him. I wouldn't recognize no. him. I'd be like, oh shit, is that for no lies. <laughs> but at one point in time, he literally probably couldn't even walk outside of his house without being like, oh shit, there's vanilla ice. Right. Yeah. Totally. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that, um, I was able to see though, I was able to see that level of, of talented skater happen. Like I was able to like, um, see that happen to Stefan and Brandon and Omar. Um, and that's really cool. Yeah to be able to like just walk behind those dudes as you roll into a place and like no one looks at you anymore because they're like, what the fuck are they going to do? Dude, look at where those guys are now. Yeah. Like where they came from mm -hmm. and where they are now. Yeah. Dude, it's so I'm so hyped to see. I'm, Especially like um, Stefan kind of, I feel like was always rising. He's always been there. But then, uh, you know, um, Omar kind of fell off for a little bit. And then like now he's like back injuries back, back, injuries you know? will fuck you up yeah he had to sit out for like a good minute when you sit out people forget about you in a know? long i mean for omar like a really long time because his yeah, his, his like, like ankles and his, his knee, and his then, knee. Yeah, yeah like his injuries are serious because of the level that he skates like it's a bomber he never decides he's gonna do some quick little thing to no. stay relevant he's, he only <laughs> has like the energy of like oh my god i have to do it now let's do it now like yeah. oh my god he's, he's so gnarly. sick so um, all three of those guys were uh, a big, like I just see them in my memory. I see them as like this package of time yeah. that happened. It kind of happened around me. It kind of happened with me, and it kind of happened to me in a weird way, because all of them I met when they were kids, and I mean kids. Yeah. Like Brandon Beeble was probably twelve. Yeah, Omar was nine or ten. No, they're all my age. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> so, so that, they know. were no, they were those those guys, those three dudes plus like uh like Ryan Parsons, like Ryan. uh Neves. Mm -hmm. Those guys were all like around right around my age. Yeah. But way above my skill level. So that's why I I like knew them but didn't know them. We skated the same spots, but they right. were I was doing nose manuals, they were doing kickflip nose manuals. Yeah. So I was kind of like they probably if they remember me at all, it was like oh, they, oh yeah, they have that Grom or that the kid mm -hmm. even though we were like the same age yeah but anyways that's that's how i remember those guys like man they are so much better than me Holy they got shit. so good so fast they mm -hmm. were like there were a group of dudes they were always together and they got good so fast like one day and stefan was like around one summer we had already kind of been putting brandon Beeble in the back of our car and taking him here and there to just because we were like yeah we'll go pick him up we'll pick him up from his mom or his dad's house and let's yeah. go wherever he wants to go um, so he was a, just a little ripper. We wanted to bring him everywhere. And at, at some point, Stefan started coming around. And I, I remember the day when Stefan went from like just a regular skate kid to like an amazing skater. I feel like it happened in one day. Yeah. It was at Sutter and we filmed this line and it was just like, oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. And then we went to the next one. Oh, okay. Like he just found his legs. Just boom, 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 boom. And yeah, he was on everything. It's just incredible. I, I have all the raw footage, and it's really fun to go through. That's, that's, yeah. uh, it's worth something. Dude, We I uh, just submitted a bunch of clips um, to Nike for a film they're making on him. Nice. And it should be pretty interesting. It's going to be about – it won't be like a full documentary, like – biography or anything but it'll be interesting enough to see some 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 of that well, unseen stuff doesn't he have the highest grossing shoe i've heard all all time that's, i've heard rumors like even above the jordans i've heard he has yeah. outsold jordans on a like because a, this his specific you know jordan has like a several different types of shoes but his, his is like yeah. his his line of shoe is like the highest grossing shoe that's what I've heard. Of I've heard that multiple <laughs> times too. That's like, what? I hit, seriously? Yeah. But when you think about it, more than just skaters will rock that shoe. My girlfriend so has mean. a pair of slip ons and she has no idea who he is. <laughs> <laughs> she just like bought them because uh, they were cute. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I actually just posted a picture of a Janowski for uh, Orbit, the skate shop I work for in the mm -hmm. Bay Area. They got the, they, they just got the light brown suede slip ons. That's cool. They look pretty dope. Yeah. I'm I, so happy for those guys. I yeah. was just thrilled to see like before me there was like jeff tolan and then there was like you know people just scraping by to be a pro skater back in the day yeah and then to see people just like oh not only did you make it you made it to the point where like you don't really have to skate anymore you just have this permanent persona 
that could carry you. And I'm just thrilled for him because every yeah. all three of those kids, they didn't come from anything special. You yeah, know? no. They all just were like, I'm willing to sleep on dirt floors. Yeah. I'm willing to, you know, ride your old broken boards. Like, Well, and talent-wise, while they're all unbelievable skaters, they're not like super top tier, you know, I mean, Nyjah fucking smashes all those fools, you know what I mean? But they're still good, you know, I mean, obviously, they're amazing skaters, obviously. I'm way better than fucking I ever been. But yeah. I'm saying as far as like top level pros, mm -hmm. as big as their names are, I feel like, you know what I mean? Like, I think, you know, I, I, and I, that to, sounds insulting. It's, no, it doesn't. Uh, but, it, there's two different categories. But, there's sports and then there's these skaters. Yeah. So I see, I see the, the guys that do, um, wow, I'm going to really sound like I don't know what I'm talking about right now. What's the contest where they invite people and they skate street stuff? Oh, the nine, uh, street league. Street league guys. Street league. So street league pros right now, like I look at them and I'm like, it's amazing what you do. And I don't care that you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible how you did that. Like, yeah. you're a great gymnast. Yeah. But when I see, like, Ishad Warskate or um, That's Stephon. Art. That's art. There's something, there's yeah. just something that's attractive. Exactly. And that's, I, and that's what I mean right there is that yeah. they're, they're quote unquote talent. Like if you look at their tricks on paper, he did X, Y, and Z on yeah. spots, X, Y, and Z. Eh, So-and-so did way better tricks there. So. so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, Pete Thompson, um, Pete Thompson was a long time, uh, photographer for, for all the magazines back in the day. And we used to go, he would take us places <laughs> First thing you ask your photographer, right? Like, like, oh, what's been done here? You know, like, he'd be like, why does it matter? Yeah, who cares? Be like, what do you want to do here? That was it. And he would, he would kind of push us. He would be like, be like, uh, you know, what do you want to do? And we'd be like, somebody in the back seat would be like, oh, it's already been done, but it hasn't been done by you. Yeah. So, and, and I brought you. Yeah. So, and no one took a picture of it. And who cares what, you know, like, <laughs> it's just like, do it the way you're going to do it. Yeah. That's what I tell my skaters too. When I would be, when I was filming with them, I, I, I don't know what what tricks were done here. I don't fucking know. Who cares? Like, You're here. Yeah. What do you want to do? Yeah. Oh, man, it's yeah. a weird like like respect thing at some point in skating where people didn't want to step on each other's toes. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. It's, it was, yeah. I'm glad. I'm, I was glad to. <laughs> I was glad to hear that. I needed to hear that at one point. Yeah. Um. All right. So let's uh let's take a look at some. Oh, you know what? Before we get into footage, I do wanted to. There was a question I wanted to ask. Um. So your you went from pro to filmer. Yeah, I was kind of a filmer my whole life. I was kind of a filmer the whole time I was a skater because um, we didn't have a filmer. And um, woke up one day and like lost my board sponsor. Wait, like even, oh, sorry, even when you were a pro, you were was, like filming and skating? Dude, like, you pick up any 411, any Thrasher, any Thrasher video, you look at the credits, like I'm going to be somewhere in there. Like I filmed so much shit. Okay. Transworld videos. The whole time I was pro, I was filming. Uh, you'll okay. see me in the background of like Tampa pro contest. Be like, had my run also was filming the contest. <laughs> <laughs> like put it on a tripod for your run. <laughs> no, like fuck me. <laughs> I just had this thing where, um, I was nervous. I couldn't sit still and I you was had to do something. I couldn't just sit there and watch. Gotcha. I, was, I was like, Oh, well, I'll just, I'll film from over here. Like I'm gonna stay busy. And it worked out for me for a good long time. And I'm, I'm glad that I did that. Was, uh, filming and photography part of your life? outside of skateboarding or did, did it come to fruition because of skateboarding? Is it, I mean, yeah, no, I was like real skateboard. It was just skateboard related. I, I, I asked like to think that I was an artist at some point in there, but no, no. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, like, I asked because that's my story too, is I, I consider myself a photographer and cinematographer, editor, blah, blah, whatever now, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it started because of skateboarding. That's my same story though. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, like I didn't I'd, shoot anything in, except skateboarding, and that's right. what honed my craft. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, hey, can you shoot this? And I was like, uh, I think so. Those are cool challenges, right? Yeah. You're just like, oh, man, man well, actually, the same thing for years. Like, yeah, I'll try to film something new and weird. Well, actually, it went skate videos, skating, skate videos, skating, to a skate contest, yeah. to skate event, where now I have to incorporate the sponsors and the booths. So now I'm looking at B-roll. Whoa. And I'm shooting other stuff, which hones my craft with shooting subjects and people and product. And then next thing you know, I'm shooting a wedding and then I'm shooting this. And then mm -hmm. next thing you know, I've fucking been shooting for the last seven years and I haven't, there's probably nothing that I haven't really shot yet. You yeah. Know, like, damn, I've shot random 
a little different shit. Like, what? yeah. <laughs> and there's a there's a lot of photography and a lot of photographers that you'll look at now, and people try and do one thing really well. They say like, oh, I have a style. Like, you can tell my picture when you see it. And I feel like that's I feel like that's not how I want to be. I feel like I want to be like like I can work for a client in any capacity they need me to. Yeah. Like I'm more proud to say that. Like, oh, yeah. what look are you looking for? Great. Show me an example. I can recreate that. Yeah. I mean, it's cool to have a style. Yeah. Um, but it's also um, a necessity to be able to be diverse. Mm -hmm. And that's what I found too, is like I have a particular style that if I post stuff on my personal uh, social media or if I have stuff hanging in my house, yeah. it's my style and I, it has a certain look to it. I don't know. I don't know if you'd be able to pick it out of a lineup, right. whatever, but I see a certain, I see it a certain way. Uh, but if a client needs something shot, Go, I'll shoot it that way. Well, you tell me how you want it shot, and I'll shoot yeah. It I want, I, if someone's paying me money, I'll shoot it how you need me to shoot it. So, are you uh, a professional photographer now? Uh, I like to say that I am. I have a forty-hour <laughs> forty-hour <laughs> week, uh, but I I do a forty-hour week with photography, or I work for Apple. Okay, and I uh, do software support and kind of bug hunting and reporting to okay. uh, the tech tech shit. Just nerd software stuff. Um, I. Talk to the engineers who do Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro, Motion, Compressor, Main Stage. It's, okay. Uh, so <laughs> it's pretty nerdy. I've got a bug to pick with you then. Okay. <laughs> You'll I'm, either be right or I'll tell you where you're doing it. Oh, wrong. no, I'm pretty angry with Apple. Okay. I'm angry. I'm like viciously <laughs> angry. And you probably would have been a guy that I would have talked to if I would have called and cussed out. Okay. I'm viciously angry. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, I recently updated my, uh, my system. My mm -hmm. iOS or whatever the whole um, the whole operating system yeah yeah mm -hmm. uh, to the newest was Sierra or whatever uh, and now my fucking Final Cut doesn't work why haven't you updated your Final Cut uh, it it won't let me update why won't it let it you update it won't let me update I don't why? I've gone through every avenue fucking possible and you haven't, you the, haven't called in <laughs> the uh, the the thing that the program uh, the version of Final Cut that I have is no longer supported. Oh, you have Final Cut 7. No. What? Final Cut uh, Pro X or whatever. And it's no longer supported, and I can't access it to update it. We can fix that today before hmm. I leave. Okay. Well, yeah. then uh, I'm, I'll be not angry. I but as guarantee <laughs> we can fix that no matter what. Now, it didn't put me out of business because I have Premiere, so yeah. that's like whatever. I just had to switch but there's certain things that I like editing in Final Cut mm -hmm. because just the streamline. It's multi-cam editing in Final Cut is, un is unbeatable. Specifically, this pod this podcast. Yeah, let's get you back in Final is, Cut today before I'm gone. <laughs> so <laughs> Premiere, takes, it takes me almost twice as long. It's three times as many clicks to do any one yeah, thing in yeah. Premiere. And I have an... It we're getting into the weeds. Anyway, this is about <laughs> skateboarding, right? <laughs> um, but yes, I will help you with that, and it will not be a problem. Okay, so, sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize, <laughs> listeners out there, for that rant. But this, you, you, dude, you might this have happened. Some video nerds watching. This happened three months ago, three and a half months ago. So I've been stewing in this anger. Okay. And as you can see in the top right hand corner of my screen, oh, there, unsupported version. Okay, right there uh, makes me every time I open my computer and I see that. I'm just, every time I'm editing in Premiere, which is almost every day of my life. Yeah. I'm like. Well, let's keep that screen recording going, uh, but <laughs> while we okay. do the fix later, okay, and right. we'll, we'll get it done. Okay, all right. Sorry, people. Okay, um, okay. So you, you're tech supported Apple doing mm -hmm. uh, video, video and audio programs, right? Yep. Cool. So if he has any issues, he could call you too. Can answer yeah. some logic questions. I was for say, you. No, I'm in the same boat with my with my audio programs. Like I haven't updated my OS since I've like 10.7 because uh, I don't want to lose. Software you didn't pay software. for? No, I paid for it. Uh, software you paid for should always work going forward. Yeah. Um, Everybody out there who doesn't pay for software. <laughs> yeah, are you a uh, Logic guy? Not yet. Pro I've, Tools? I've, yeah, Pro Tools. I've been, I've been considering Logic. but uh, Pro Tools might make you pay more. Yeah, I, yeah, I have an older Pro Tools and the newer ones all subscription-based and whatnot. So. Yeah, yeah. But, Adobe got me on the subscription thing. I'm paying monthly. Me too. Yeah. yeah. 50 fucking yeah, dollars a month, dude. Too. You on that too? You yeah, on the I'm whole on one? Yeah. I'm on it. Yeah. No deal for working at Apple or anything. Just, no deal? No. Just, I don't know. Do you get a deal on, uh, on, on like, product, though? Like, like 
Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And if yeah, any of my close friends need anything, my screen's broken. Ooh, I don't know if you can see that. It's cracked almost all the way down. Oh, man. Yeah, you see that? So it's yeah. All, yeah. Hold that computer. Uh, a late 2015. It's too. Yeah, you gotta fix that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll check and see if there are any. Uh, yeah. So, uh, for repairs. Pe- yeah, people who don't know me or haven't been here. Yeah, my uh, my 27 inch fucking iMac. Uh, so I I went to uh, adjust it, and my ring hit the top of the glass right near the yeah, and just put a little tiny chip in it, right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, it just sat like that for just for hell along with a little tiny chip. And then um, I left the door open to the studio, and I think the the sun was on oh, my the back of my computer. Weird. And because it was cold, the temperature change, all of a sudden it just, the crack just started spidering, uh, working its way. And now it's all the way the fucking, almost all the way down the screen, dude. Okay. Well, let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about computer stuff after the cast, but I, I have some ideas for you. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, I mean, I mean, whatever. It, it still works. <laughs> but, um, it doesn't show up on the screen recording. No. no so that's no. great. Yeah, it's cool. No. Um, <laughs> all right. So there's uh, two videos that uh, that I watched um, that you sent me the um, expedition alone and thrasher rocket science. Yeah. So the, those were two like full lengths that you said you, you did you fully film and edit? Yeah. You said produce. So I assume that means, you know, you film, you know, you film it. at least 70% of it. Yeah. Well, obviously um, there's yeah second angles or whatnot, but yeah. you, you filmed it, you edited, you put yeah. it together, you pick the music primarily, primarily. Yeah. 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 Those are, these are, these are two videos that, I worked on, I liked them when they were done, which... You're happy with them. It's pretty rare that you finish anything if you're particular and you like them when they're, when you're done. Dude. Um, because there's pressure, there's time pressure, like, okay, it's got to be done by this date, and if it's not, you're like, no, there's more I want to do. Yeah. So um, super thrilled to work with the dudes at Expedition. Um, I'll give you the short story running up to it. I was, I was a pro skater, and I was riding for Santa Cruz for a couple of years, and I got hurt. And I hurt bad, like put my foot on backwards kind of bad. And I didn't have health insurance because pro skaters don't have health insurance or didn't at that time. For real? Yeah. So basically I did, I had to be off six months, about eight months maybe. So I wasn't able to, I couldn't, I had no power in my foot. Um, I couldn't, I just no, nothing was working, you know, like I couldn't force, couldn't force through it. I tried to do do it yourself, physical therapy with rubber bands and all those things that people do and just nothing. It was just going to be time. Yeah. So I just was like, all right, well, I guess I'll try and stay active. And uh, we were making a Santa Cruz video. So I was like, well, I guess I'll just drive everybody around. I'll film everybody and ended up kind of taking the role of team captain or team manager or whatever. We went on, we went on this summer road trip and during that summer road trip, I started to heal up. I started like really feeling okay again. I started jumping down shit again and putting a part together on the road with all my homies. And I was like really excited to put this video together by the end of the, the end of the trip. When I came back from that trip, we had been on the road for like six, seven weeks driving around the United States. I came back to drop off the van at Santa Cruz and I walked in the front office and there was like a little brochure where they have like your boards in it and stuff. And it was the brochures had like just arrived. And I was like, oh, what does my new board look like? And I opened it up and I was like, my board's, oh, my not, board's in not in here. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, that's fucking rude. Can I get a phone call or like, can yeah. I get some kind of just heads up? Um, I know you're out there breaking your balls and like running the team and um, babysitting everyone and well, like, like oh, I was so pissed. Were they still letting you be the team manager? Maybe were they trying to transition you into? <laughs> they tried to transition me. So I walked in the office. I grabbed that. I was like, oh shit, what's up with this? And I was like, oh, I'm gonna go upstairs and talk to Jeff Kendall. He was the, he was the brand manager. And I walked in his office and I like had it in my hand. And he was like, hey Raptor. And I was like, oh, you weren't supposed to see that. Hey. Basically, <laughs> I was like, hey dude. I just came and like sat at his desk. I was like, so saw the catalog. Like, thanks. Like. <laughs> I just was killing myself like yeah. <laughs> yesterday. My legs are still hurting. Yeah. What's like, up? What's the deal? And he, he was like, well, we're moving the brand in another direction and you've been doing really great with the team. We were hoping that you'd uh, be willing to take a team management position. And I was like, we would have had this conversation. Yeah. Like, 
Like, talk to me about that shit. <laughs> like, yeah, you, you don't have to, you don't have to say you don't have to say, hey, Mike, um, we're not gonna release your board. I'd like to talk to you. Like, you don't have to say it like any way you want, but just yeah. don't have me walk in and fucking see that. That's just rude. Well, yeah, because it's you've already made your decision. Yeah, like you, uh, it's set literally set in stone. And I'm like, sure this happens to all pro skaters at some point. You know, you have that yeah. like some weird happens. And you're like, oh, they're not calling me back or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at this point, he was he honestly was like, hey. Like, we'll even pay you a little bit more money. Uh, we'll need you to move to Santa Cruz. I don't have to film anymore? <clears throat> I, don't I, don't have to, like, I don't have to break myself? I was basically like... Okay. I was kind of like, uh, fuck you. And <laughs> oh, really? I was over it. Oh, damn. I, I mean, might not have said oh. fuck you. I think I was like... I was like... I don't have to think about this. Like, what do I want to do? Number one, I wasn't a fucking super great pro skater. I was Okay. And I didn't think I had a whole bunch of options on the table. Like, where would I go next? Like, I'm the people I'm skating with, like, <laughs> the people I was literally skating with was, like, Eric Bork and Mikey Taylor and, yeah. um, like, Ron Whaley and Stefan and Omar and Beeble. And I was like, dude. I can't keep up. I, I, li- <laughs> I literally was like, I'm not as good as these dudes. And I don't even fucking care enough at this point to try and be. I'm just going to. I'm just going to see what happens over the next couple of weeks. I'm just going to put my head down. I'm going to keep skating. I'm going to keep filming. And we'll see if anything flushes out. I had a couple of small companies hit me up, which I kind of expected. And I didn't want to be, I didn't want to like milk anything. Yeah. I didn't want to like go ride for a smaller company that I didn't, like I wasn't excited about. Yeah. Just like get money from them. <clears throat> no, it just felt gross. Yeah. Um, and I was just, I was just like, I'm just, we'll see what happens. And two weeks after, um, no, no. At the time, did you have like how about how old were you? I don't know. Roughly, it's been a long time. Twenty six, like mid to late mid to late twenties, somewhere yeah, around mid there. Mid to late twenties. Um, did you have bills? Did you have? Hell yeah, you have bills. I so, got rent to pay. Um, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of bills, but you know, I was living off of twenty two hundred dollars a month or whatever you get when you're a pro in the nineties. Yeah. Um, the tech decks were like keeping me alive for a while there <laughs> <laughs> you got ro- like royalties yeah damn it's yeah. crazy i think i made more money on tech decks than i did on my real board that's hilarious <laughs> yeah. dude it's insane it was the number one uh stocking stuffer and for the christmas in 1999 yeah I, I did have i had a bunch of tech decks yeah yeah it was mm-hmm. sick <laughs> what else are you gonna do in class <laughs> mm, skate your books yeah 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 it's crazy so yeah i get bills to pay um but my bills weren't a lot so i was like let's just see what happens in the next two weeks um, Stefan rode for Expedition. Kyle Leeper rode for Expedition. Um, Brandon Beeble, I think, was still, or he just left and went to Girl. Um, these are all my close friends, people I was with all the time. And I got a phone call from uh, Troy at Expedition. Troy is the owner, Troy Morgan. And he's like, he's like, hey, um, I was wondering if you would be willing to come down and meet with me about some expedition stuff. And I was like, sure. Well, yeah, sure. Like, he's like, we got this video we want to make. Um, the guys you hang out with all the time are the people in our video. So they all express that they'd like to have you around. I'd like to meet you. And I went down there and had breakfast with Troy. And Troy was like, <clears throat> he's a long time skate guy. Like he, he's been around as long as anybody. And he just had this very serious conversation with me um, over breakfast. And he was, he was like, I just want to start this conversation by saying, if you want to be a pro skater, you should be a pro skater. You, I, think you're, I think you should still be a pro skater. You should do that somewhere if that's what you want to do. Um, if that's not what you're looking to do, I think you would be a great asset to our team as like a filmmaker for us. And I was like, this is the sweetest fucking deal. Right? I get to continue my lifestyle. Zero changes. Only thing I have to do is skate when I feel like it. I don't have to skate for money anymore. Just get to film. I get to hang out with the best skaters in the world. And film them. And film them, which I was doing anyway for free. <laughs> um, and Troy was like, was like, hey, like I can offer to pay you whatever you were making as a pro. And I was like, Five thousand a month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I couldn't lie to him. He knew he, he knew too much. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I got to kind of like jump into uh, working on this alone. We didn't know it was going to be called the alone video. Um, I don't even know how that. I think a, is it because you did it alone? 
I felt like I did a lot. <laughs> Fuck, I was very tired making this video. Um, but I got to work on a, the expedition video. Do you guys remember when expedition? I don't know if you. If, I don't even know if this was when you guys were skating or not. But expedition, the first expedition ad was like a seven page Transworld ad where it was a portrait of everyone on the team and it was uh-huh. black backgrounds and smoke and it was like Shani and yeah. Alfonso Ross. Sounds and vaguely Stefano familiar. Motz, yeah, I, ha- I had a subscription to Transworld and I'm, that sounds vaguely familiar. You're just like, Where it's like headshots, right? Yeah, you're like, yeah. holy shit, something's happening. Yeah. And fucking Expedition, they were an uncompromising brand. Like, yeah, they were not fucking around. Still are. Yeah, they're killer. Yeah. So high respect for that. Got to work on this video um, for about probably about a year. We worked on this. That was my primary thing. And uh, did you were you like given a budget or were, um, um, like with travel? Because there's a lot of spots in this video. So obviously you guys were milling all about. Yeah. Um, so like, I, I'm, I'm foggy on it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I was kind of given. I was given anything I needed to get it done. We weren't right on. We weren't like so. You're like, I need to go here. They're like, okay. Yeah, like yeah. like it was more driven by the skaters. So the skaters are like, hey, we want to go to Japan. Cool, we'll make it happen. Like we'll go to Japan. Cool. We got we got distributors over there that would love to meet you. And we had uh, Sarichiro Nakajima. He was a skater from Japan that fucking killed. We went out and he showed us everything. Super awesome. Uh, we had everything we needed to make the video. I mean, Troy never said no. Star, we were, the stars just aligned. Yeah, I mean, he never said no to gas money. Like, yeah, he wasn't like throwing gold chains at us and shit. But <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, I watched something. I watched the Nine Club episode with uh, Brandon Turner, and he was talking about going on like Osiris trips and shit. And like, so much of it wasn't about skating. It was just like these crazy yeah tour of partying. This was not us. We were hitting the road, like, like just dogging it out. Well, all those guys were pure skaters. Yeah, those were fucking skaters. That's all they wanted to do was. Well, I mean, I don't know them obviously, but that's mm-hmm. what it. That's what it appeared from the looking from the outside. Yeah, and just having um, minimal interactions with some of these guys that either spots or parks or uh, they came through Epic um, at one point. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got to skate with them later on. But the, those dudes were like super cool and yeah. s- skated like a motherfucker. Yeah. So this video was made um, primarily. Let's see. So Troy would have been the executive producer because he paid for it. Um, I shot and edited it about, I probably edited 90% of it. Uh, I put together the skaters' parts, and then uh, we handed stuff back and forth to a guy named Dave Kinsey, who's a uh, graphic artist. So he did a lot of the like, graphic effects. The effects. And so I was going to ask about that. Well, I was going to ask what program you used for After that. Effects. Um, yeah, it's primarily After Effects driven. And this was around the same time when um, Troy and them were working with Obey Giant and Shepard Ferry. Yeah. So you can almost like feel that style. Yeah, Expedition has always had that very, um, that Obey influence Yeah. in, in their artwork. I don't know if he's involved with their... Troy's just really into the, but like, he definitely loves the art. Close to, he loves the art yeah. and he's willing to pay for it. Yeah. It's fucking cool stuff. It's pretty rad. Yeah. I mean, their logo alone is just, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. I've got a shitload of their stickers all over, all over my house. <laughs> yeah, the products were great. I mean, the, everything they made was great. Like yeah. they always had like back at a time where you had like people doing, um, you know, like one pass, like one pass screen prints and stuff. They yeah. were always like two or three pass screen prints and like multiple colors, quality like, super shit. high quality yeah. stuff, and, like good textiles, good yeah. fabrics. And I would imagine they're still doing that. I mean, they they did good with DGK, yeah, um, Organica. Yeah, rest in peace. Yeah, we're gonna kick him right after this. It was yeah. like, yeah, it was cool. We should watch a minute of this. It's this nice was, that these videos are so short. Anyway, in fact, there's a uh, the Organica promo in the beginning. Yep. Let's start this so we got full screen here. Yeah, the, uh, there's the in the very beginning of the video. There's um, an Organica promo. Coming February 2002. Yep. So I'm guessing this video came out in 2001 then. Probably. Yeah, that would put us right in the right spot. And I, th- if I remember correctly, I think Trevor Prescott, rest in peace, um, did a lot of Carl's uh, filming in this video. That's Chris Lambert, the San Diego double set. I mean, you can almost Jeez. tell how big it is, that angle. He, Dude, it goes on forever. forever. Yeah, <laughs> it's forever. like more and more yeah. stairs flying by. 
<laughs> oh, geez, almost looks fake. Where it's just like, it does. like he's got a fake ground rolling underneath him. Yeah. So that was one of the um, some rotoscope stuff that uh, I had originally done in a think video a long time before this video. Or no, you did. Uh, yeah. Was it before this or after this? Now I can't remember. I think it was before, before this. There's a Think video out there that has a bunch of rotoscope in the beginning. It looks like the old uh, Apple iPod commercials yeah. where the dancers are cut out. We yeah. decided to kind of make that happen for this too. This video is amazing with the Batman music and shit. <laughs> it's pretty sick, right? Yeah. Um, so Shani started off. Um, I bet that's a John Holland shot probably. That was a new... And what were you... Uh, you Were you editing on Premiere back then? No, Final Cut Pro 7, um, which some people still use today. And yeah. And it's almost I, 20 years ago. I actually just had a conversation with uh, one of my buddies. What's up, Dylan? Uh, the other day about that. He still uses Final Cut Pro uh, 7. Yeah. And he's like uh, not updating his software or whatever. People don't <laughs> like to change, man. You get, you get your workflow done and down, and if the product can do it, then just do it. That's but, why I'm so mad about Final Cut Pro, because I had my workflow down. It was I was efficient. It exported to the right places. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you'll be back on that today before yeah. I leave. All right. Guaranteed. All right. I'm excited. Yep. Um, Sorry to talk about that again, people. I don't know if it's, <laughs> it's I bitter. Know, I don't know if you can tell it's a sensitive subject. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that barrier, man. We skated that barrier on a weekly basis. We used to put it in the back of Kyle's truck and take it out to the bump um, by Gold Club Centerfolds Strip Club. <laughs> Skate that all night. It's so I was super excited to work with Shani because he had like one of my favorite parts in that old rhythm video. Um, him and Richard both were in the that rhythm team. Oh, Shani got some legs on him, man. Over the fence, though. That's Little known crazy. fact, Shani is like a serious um, kung fu. He's like a black belt in kung fu. Really? Yeah. Uh, S- yeah. Super, super strange facts about him. Uh, Mongo and, push. Oh, uh, yeah. Back when it was okay. Busted. Back when it was okay. No, it was okay then. I'm not sure if it was. No, it was okay then. We might have gave him shit. For no, it. we saw it a bunch of times. <laughs> I've seen it a bunch of. I've seen a bunch of Mongo pushes in this video. Pioneers in this video. And it's okay. It's okay. I pushed Mongo back then too. I still push Mongo. Fuck it. Only for Switch though. Switch Mongo. Yeah. Only yeah. Switch Mongo. Only go to Switch. So this is Stefan's first video part for real. Like first real video part. His first real. He does look super young in there. Yep. Little baby face. Little Rockland. Rockland High, I think. Roseville High. Dude, I rewatched this video uh, yesterday and this morning. Sick. So many memories from all the spots. Yeah. I got a ticket there. I remember that for filming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one looked like, uh, no one looked this smooth at this time in skateboarding. He's like flowing, like he's just skating through water or something. He's just got that effortless style. Yeah. And just going from switch to regular or whatever, you know, it's just. Just does whatever, however. So crazy. Yeah, like it just butters. There were so many people at this session this day. Uh, Cardiel grinded some crazy rail in Auburn this day, just down the street. Man, what was that like? <sighs> just anytime you're just, around that. Just being around him. I was, <laughs> dude still shoots me a text every now and then on some old shit, and I'm just like, how does this dude even know who I am? Cause he's another one of those dudes that's like cool shit. Yeah, like I I have minimal inter- interactions with him, but I have several people who know him like really well, and that you can no- count on it. There's nothing but good things to say about that guy. You totally count on it. The fucking ninja training right here, dude. Yeah, dude, totally. that line. Totally. That, you put that line up today, and people are like, "Damn." <laughs> no, I did that fucking twenty years ago, bro. Right. Stefan was on a roll, man. He just um, he had some things he wanted to do, and he just went out sh- and got them done. What shoes are you? Is he Savier's? Right this is when Savier oh, first came. Oh yeah, switch yeah. flip twin towers gap, dude. That um, that was not the. F- that's not even the first time he did it. It was like poorly filmed uh, a while before that. Um, and he just wanted to get it again, like real smooth. Dude, that gap was so fun. That's a good gap to uh, hang up and like knock your teeth out, or or get, into hit, or get hit by a car. Yeah, or get hit by a parking meter. That's my friend broke his leg on the parking meter. Uh, yeah, that's con- <laughs> a bunch of people did. It's so gnarly, <laughs> it's so gnarly. Um, I have some outtake footage of that that I'll probably post pretty soon here. The not my front side flip down there. 
he like slides on the concrete and almost hits his head onto the wall as he's sliding. He stops like one inch from cracking his dome Damn. on that marble. Yeah, he looks so young. Oh yeah, definitely. Young Stefan. I don't know who filmed all of Alfonso Rawls stuff in this. Uh, I had only met him once or twice the whole time I worked for expedition and he would just go out on little filming missions with other people. And we never knew what he had until it, he was like, is it time to turn in the footage yet? Or are you still working on it? And we were like, Oh, we're still working. He's like, I'll turn it in when it's time. And he just showed up with some gnarly stuff. And we were just like, <laughs> cool dude. Um, I think he was designing for DC at the time. Like he wasn't even, I think he wasn't even considering himself a pro skater, but he was out filming these crazy parts. <laughs> Gnarly. Yeah. Just, I mean, I've heard a lot of uh, dudes that are like that that don't really like to skate around other people. They just have certain people they like to skate with. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Alf is just beyond all that. And if you watched any of his stuff in the old H Street videos, he was one of those all train skaters and shreds everything. Just vert, mini ramp, spines, street, curbs, flatland, the whole thing. So, killer dude. So I'm gonna we're gonna switch gears for a quick second, yeah, and go to the uh, Thrasher video. Yeah, this is such a fun video. So this video, when did this come out? I have no idea. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens. You walk away from skating for a minute, and you just um, don't know when anything happened. So I found it on uh, on YouTube, posted by a guy, a channel True Skate Vids, Skate okay. with an Eight. Um, I just, you know, typed in Thrasher Rocket Science. And this video came up. This got published on 2013, but it was way from the look, from the from just from the look of the footage. It's definitely from somewhere around the time period of. It's the, probably uh, right of, after the expedition video of the alone video, because yeah. I I know the I know the sequences of videos that I made. So it was alone video, and then I went to work for Thrasher and I did the first Skater of the Year video, and then I think the very I, the very first. Yeah, you did the first ever Skater of the Year video. Where they did like the first, it was a video about the skaters of the years for the first 13 of them. Yeah. So that was, we got hired at Thrasher to complete that video. And I think I had to do a King of the Road video. Sick. And then I was kind of free to do this video. So this is probably 2003. Um, another, there's, there's a bunch of stuff in this video. Dude, this is Omar Salazar's first part. First part? I'd never seen him have a part oh, in anything yeah, before right. this. Yeah. Jeremy Morgan, I don't know if anyone remembers. Uh, wait, not. Is it Jeremy Morgan? Oh, I'm a dick. I can't remember. <laughs> um, Silas Baxter Neal, first part in anything. Dude, and he he's the ender, right? Yeah. Bro. This part Insane. is fucking boss. <laughs> I mean, I forgive me, I hadn't seen this video before. Mm -hmm, nice. Um you didn't have your VHS player on deck or what? I I guess not, dude. Um <laughs> I honestly I was more of a trans world guy. So was I, but I was working at Thrasher. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't subscribe to Thrasher. I didn't really have much um, exposure to the Thrasher side of things. The, this time for Thrasher was really bad. Yeah. Um, a lot of their advertisers pulled, and um, Thrasher became almost like a magazine that was owned by Deluxe. Like, yeah, they were so intertwined with things that happened at Deluxe that it was basically indie ads, think ads, yeah. real ads, um, and. Yeah. Uh, Santa, I think Santa Cruz ads, because that was like, when I wrote for Santa Cruz, it was the only magazine that would publish a photo of me in editorial. Because <laughs> Santa Cruz didn't advertise with Transworld, and the photographers I hung out with and shot me worked for Transworld. So oh, sometimes, oh, sometimes Santa Cruz would be like, you need to get more coverage. And I'm like, I'm shooting. Like, I got plenty of coverage. And then as soon as I was off that team, all my photos started to come out in Transworld as oh. soon as I was off Santa Cruz. <laughs> That's a bummer. And Whatever, I, at least you got to see him. Yeah, and I didn't understand what was happening back then. I was just busy skating, and then finally, like a photographer, like told me how it all works. I was like, Why'd you tell me that when it was important? Right? Like, when I could have done something about it. I want to quit that team and work for somebody else just to get the coverage. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was probably two thousand three. So there's um, there's a few things in this video. There's like a consolidated trip. Yeah. There's was... like a, a Sacramento trip. So uh, was this like the just the guys who like hung out with Thrasher or this is just the guys that I hung out with. This video is like about a year of my life. Almost. This is just kind of like a video about what happened to me this year. Really? Watch. I fucking love okay. to watch it. I get that's, so psyched. Well, that's cool. Cause um, cause a lot cause of contributors just, too. Cause just watching it from the outside, it's like, it seems a little random cause it's like Super a, random. like a montage and then a company trip and then another trip that is just a trip. It's, 
and then a part. You know, yeah, it's like like okay. So you know how sometimes <laughs> people make like they make like their local skate shop video or their just a friend's video and it comes out really good and people end up seeing it. Yes, like this is like that for me. This is just like the people I wanted to work with. Um, Brad, I and Thrasher was and still is always down to publish people you've never heard of. Whereas Transworld totally, was like, yeah. who the fuck are you? You're not getting in here. You, you, you. Yeah. Like that was different back then. So I knew that I could, I could look around and be like, that dude's fucking sick. And I could, I could say to that dude, hey, if you're willing to put a part together, Jake Phelps will let me put it in the video. So just really fucking cool. That's, that's rad. It's like a so yearbook for me. What's, uh, what's Jake like? I've never met him. He's, um, He's the hero skateboarding needs, He's a- <laughs> but doesn't want. <laughs> he keeps, um, I, I really had an awful relationship with him and had really? a lot of animosity working for him and ended up quitting. And I think I left him an angry letter. Um, oh. And looking back on it, I'm still able to see the importance of Jake Phelps. Like, even oh, when okay. I was like, fuck that dude, he's pointless. I still look back and go like, no, he's really important. He, like, yeah. There would be no Thrasher without Jake Phelps. There would be like we would have lost, we would have lost skateboarding to sports if it hadn't been for Thrasher. I agree. They've just kept. They've well, not kept, only sp- like yeah, the, corporate skateboarding would have gone corporate without yeah. Well, or it, skateboarding did go corporate, but there mm-hmm. w- there wouldn't be an underground. Yeah, there wouldn't be a true. Uh, we would have lost punk rock yeah. part of skateboarding, punk rock, yeah. which I've never even been into. Me like either. I've never yeah. been into the punk side of it, but I think it's super important. But I appreciate it. Yeah. Can totally appreciate it. Yeah. The diversity is important. And Jake Phelps has made a lot of shit happen for a lot of nobodies. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's true. And why? Doesn't really reward him. Yeah, he doesn't make any money off their contracts or anything. No. no. He just he just has done things that he thinks are good for skateboarding. Yeah. So I have a lot of respect for him and I don't like him very much. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, we'll move on. Yeah. Uh we we try to keep the positives going, you know. It's true. Um, it's true. So, so this video has, you said Omar's first part. Yeah. The intro to his part is hilarious, dude. Oh, that was the fun, huh? Yeah, it was, it was the end of his part. Um, or the, but this right here, look at how young, <laughs> look at how young he is, dude. Look at that. So you can always, you always know Omar's going to get into some shit. So for people who can't see it, he's got his head stuck it's like one of those tall fences, those black like <laughs> iron fences that have the vertical, you know, every oh like six God. inches or whatever. Somehow he got his head in between them and his head is like, like legit stuck. <laughs> and that's his intro. <laughs> Call the paramedics, dude. Uh, oh, and he gets it out. Yeah, I mean, he get, it takes like three people. <laughs> looks like th- he's pulling them apart and two people on each side are pulling them apart just so he can get his fucking head out. Oh, that's a... I, that's a prime example of Omar right there. Yeah, dude, he's gonna get into fucking. I'm stick my head in there. He's gonna get his, he's gonna get into <laughs> some shit for sure. You can count on a good time. Yeah, yeah. Omar's count. another one of those guys that I know uh, third hand, third you know, mm-hmm. third party. Yeah, or like, we'll, yeah. you know, what's up? But that's um, about it. And you know, I haven't hung out with them on a regular basis in many many years. But I would say that in Omar's youth, he was also somebody like Carl Watson, who was going to talk to you. He's totally. Gonna, like be really outgoing yeah. and happy to meet you. And like, let's go skate to every hills. Yeah. He meet any new skater. Didn't care. Let's go skate sometime. Like, oh, let's that just guy just seemed skate. pumped on life. I hope so, man. No, he just, that's how he seemed to yeah. us. He just seemed pumped. Yeah. Just always pumped. Yeah. His story is awesome. I hope that people will follow up on interviews with Omar. He, his family's from, um, from Chile and they fled Chile during like an awful dictatorship. Um, and it was like, we need to leave or they're going to like, they're killing all of our types of people. So like he, they came, fucking came to America as immigrants with nothing. And, uh, I remember having to talk to his mom about like, oh, so, um, Omar's really, I had to explain to her like Omar's a really good young skateboarder and he has a couple of opportunities. Like I really want to take him here or we really want him to meet these people. Can he go on a trip with us? Um, he was well underage to be hanging out with us. Yeah. Like I was in my late twenties. Like 20s. you want to take my son where? Yeah, it's like I want to take your third. I'm like I'm in my late twenties. I want to take your thirteen year old on a trip with a bunch of guys. <laughs> and it was, uh, I convinced them. Like I, she ended up being okay with it. Eventually, I returned him safely a number enough times that yeah. <laughs> was start okay. with short trips and then we build from there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But Omar had a lot of people. Um, 
looking out for him. Uh, there's a guy named Billy Miller who I think was really big for Omar back in the day. Uh, there was a couple skate shops out there in Roseville, The Shop, and then uh, The Wave, I think, was out there too. And those people, you know, they hooked him up to the extent that a skate shop can. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, he definitely deserved it. Dude, he's awesome. I would love to have him in here. He would He would probably come in. Oh, well, hit, okay. hit, hit him up for me. Yeah, well. Because I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah. I'm not going to like DM him on Instagram. He's like, that's, <laughs> that's not going to go anywhere. Might get lost in there. Yeah. Um, but so his part, dude. His part is... He just smashed his head into that pole. Yeah. <laughs> so this ollie is crazy because you're going between things. There's not enough room. That is... I've been to that spot numerous times. So ollie in the stairs is awesome at that spot. Like, that's a, bi- that's a big set of stairs. Dude. But he snuck through that sideways. Yes. And it's not a direct shot to it. You no. have to, you're leaning in as you're ollieing. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, and there's a fat crack. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those big fat crack with the mushy stuff inside. It's, it's an expansion joint, That's so it's it like is. two. It's like an inch wide. Omar can't see those; he's yeah. blind to expansion he joints. Rolls right over. Him. Don't <laughs> yeah. give a he don't yeah. give a fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that because I've looked at that gap, dude. I've tried. I've taken numerous guys there, and we normally skate the other set mm-hmm. uh, where they do like two tricks. Yeah, that's normally how. Because yep. and I always like try to shoot. Like, hey guys, what about? Anybody, about something awesome you, over yeah, here. Yeah, dude, this is possible. <clears throat> and the, every time they're like, nah, that, that's fucking crazy, dude. That's fucking yeah. crazy. Omar's always finding the line that no one saw. And he like, just fucking pops, just pops it like boom. Uh, and strangely enough, I don't, I've been going through all the old footage and like putting it all into the computer and capturing the funny stuff in between. And I recently came across that footage and there are no tries. So I was going to say, it I think it was yeah, first try. He probably just, well, his type of skater, which I, I've, had the uh, pleasure of experiencing uh, filming a skater typical, somewhat like him. I don't know if you know Trino Mercado. I know who he is, um, but I've never met him. So he's like, his style is pretty similar to Omar's, where he he just fucking you know I mean? your camera better be ready. Well, he, they might not even tell you they're doing. That's it. what I mean. Your <laughs> camera <just> skating. <laughs> your camera better be no. ready before you get out of the car because as soon as you get out of the car and he has his hands on his board, yeah. something something's happening. You're going to miss it. Like something's <laughs> happening. <laughs> Stefan and PJ Ladd used to um they used to fuck with me. Um they would say we'd get to the spot and they'd be like, "Hey, let's see if we can get this before before Mike can get his camera out. So we were at the triple set one day oh, and fuckers. they were both trying to get a 360 flip um, before I could get my camera set up. And Dick move. Uh, Stefan got his feet on it. Um, PJ just landed it. And dick, dick move. Yeah. I don't think it's in any video. Dick move. You missed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't care though. They don't care, dude. Because <laughs> they know they did it. That's that's what they did it for. It's for yeah. them. They, they were like, hey, remember that one time we tray flipped that shit before he set up his camera? Uh-huh. Yeah, it was funny, huh? It's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> in that moment just like haunts you forever yeah um you, what's that guy's name uh there's a the dude that filmed all the pj's lads stuff was his good friend i don't know he had like they call him beagle i think but oh his, beagle I think yeah his name is beagle yeah but he has he had a, his name is dave um <clears throat> if i'm remembering all this shit right um we were in the car and i was like a little i was a little pissed about it and like <laughs> i was like how come you wouldn't do that to Dave. Like, and he goes, no, but Dave's cool. And I was like, hey, fuck oh, you. Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> get out of my car then. <laughs> but cool. it was funny at the time. Yeah. And I, I got it. It was fucking hilarious. Well, were you like the old guy? Were you like the older I guy? I was like two years older and I was oh. the old guy. Oh, yeah. Fuck those guys. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> fuck that. That's fucking rude, dude. Yeah. So Omar's killing it. Um, this continues on to show him backside 50-50, this huge hubba in West Sac that had had just been poured, so yeah. it wasn't even waxed yet. It's not skatable. That's in downtown Sac. No yeah. one's ever right skated on J, that. Right on J Street, dude. <laughs> Big-ass church yeah, right on J hell? Street. Like dude, Street, this right... Oh, is it? Somewhere it's around there. It may, yeah, it might be yes. Oh. Oh, fucking Omar I is keep so wanting gnarly, to, As dude. I'm watching this, I want to tell him, dude, be careful. Like, right? Right? Omar, watch out. Watch be out. careful, dude. Where? This is huge. Go there. That's under the freeway. That's the not a skate spot. Yeah. A lot of these things aren't. Look at people in the background with the giant, <laughs> the giant jersey. <laughs> it's dead serious. He's, um, he, he's still got a giant jersey on. So on, he's, just, he's just big and fits into yeah, it now. He fits it now. So <laughs> this <Yeah>. day, <laughs> Beeble switch big fin, switch big fin. I can't. You know what I'm saying? Switch big spin. Switch big spin flipped Miraloma and just wasn't clean enough to go in any video. Jeez, just wasn't clean enough. Wasn't clean enough for him. Booster. 
Dude, no one's ever done that before. Right? He skates so fast. Man. So that right there. Oh, man. The third, third and army. He straight grinds one of the ledges, hops the gap to the next ledge. Yeah. And if you've been there, that's monstrous. Yep. That's insane. That's you can't do that. Plus, those ledges are only like a, a barely wide because of the rail you on your top. Toe on them. Yeah, the rail on top. <laughs> so if you don't land like perfect, you're yeah. you'll run into the and then fall over the other side. Yeah. And that's no. That's not going to be a fun day for you. No. You'll hit something. On the other Dude, side Omar's side. so gnarly. That that's on sunrise. Yeah. Go just, to these places today, and you'll oh, I've see. been to all these spots. That's why it was bringing like, I I filmed on all these spots like 10 years after you. <laughs> yeah. And there people were still skating them, you know? Mm-hmm. We're still skating the same spots. Yeah. You like all the uh, uh all the Carl spots? Carl. Uh in the expedition video, right? Oh, Carl Watson spots. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Dude, There's so, so many good memories in this for me. I put a whole montage of him trying this backflip to fakie on Instagram on my like skater page thing where he slams onto the speed bump over and over and over again back lip that thing you know how many people have eaten shit at that spot san juan the san juan 12 yeah. people who uh it's a beat now. watching that's where a trino uh smashed he smashed the back of his head what was he trying uh back lip damn he's trying back lip and he hung up and already been done man it felt, <laughs> i tried to tell him i tried to tell him it was done 20 years no, ago man. yeah he was trying to do uh back lip regular okay and uh and just like kind of hung up yeah. And fell back and literally Ring his bell. popped his head like a grape, dude. Gross. Spent like three days in the hospital. Oh, all the way. Oh, it's bad news. Dude, it was like was out cold. Damn. Like uh, the clip ends, like he hits and his body literally like he hits and he like rolls over, just like rolls over. And then as the clip is ending, you can hear him snoring. And we're both angles are like 10 or 15 feet away. We're doing both doing long lens. Yeah. And you could hear him snoring. <sighs> That's loud. He was out, dude. That's scary stuff. Because was... that'll affect you for the rest of your life, even if it's like a good hard one that you recover from. Like yeah. you never fully recover. Something will change later. He he. It was rough for him for uh, a little bit, and he's. I mean, he's doing better. He's doing good now, but it was brutal, bro. Gnarly. Like destroyed my stomach for a minute. Yeah. You know? like, gross. Gave me nightmares and shit. Yep. I hate that. That's yeah. the worst thing about filming. There's a fall montage in. Uh, I think this video. Rocket Science. It's a gnarly one. Dude, how do you deal with that as a filmer? Um, I've been I've known a lot of skaters who can't watch the slams. A lot of skaters, so I don't watch them. They'll be like, I don't look at them. And for me, it's always just been a really great reminder to be careful. So I watch all the slams. Like <clears throat> it's rough. I forget where it is in the video. It's but, probably right uh, in the middle. Uh, I, I remember I had a really funny song for it. It's like beep boop boop beep beep beep. <laughs> it's like really fucking funny stuff. It, it, it was rough though, <laughs> dude. It was rough. This whole video is pretty amazing. Damn, Aaron Harrison still killing it. He's been posting clips lately, stuff he's been skating. Have you ever? You've probably seen him around if you worked at the skate park at some point, unless he was down in San Diego. Uh, I'm. I'm like unbelievably terrible with uh with na- with names for the most part. Oh, a little Kyle Leeper? Pre I think this is some pre expedition footage. Or no, this was expedition throwaway footage, sorry. <laughs> oh, that went in the Thrasher video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, throwaway footage for these guys is really good stuff. It would be gold for me. Yeah. Like I'll take I'll take half your throwaway footage, bro. Yeah. Fuck. Super good shit. Um, I also used Sacramento music in this video. So this is a um, this is underground movement sounds. So Jay Synth is a local uh, video producer. He does a lot of stuff with like E40 and all the like real rappers in the Bay Area. He's probably in this in this track. <laughs> the, the real rappers. <laughs> the real rappers. <laughs> Dude, you have a uh, you got a pretty rich rich history. Seems like you've done a lot. I've dude, my resume looks weird actually. After um shit, after Thrasher, and I was just fucking sick of it. Uh I went and took over Eric Condell's uh flat spot skate shop. It had taken a it had taken a hit on money and they couldn't make it. Kind of got they had some credit card fraud run through there that just put them over. Fuck. Um and I was looking for something new to do. And uh, my wife at the time 
like loaned or not even loaned me, granted me some money, granted me, <laughs> granted me some money to take over Eric's skate shop. And, uh, I did flat spot for a couple of years and that's, how, how was that? That was great, dude. It was so fucking cool. Yeah, but didn't fi- make any money. I was going to say, but financially wasn't so right. No, but I got to meet J.R. Diaz. Um, he was a flat spot local, always there, Matt Nevis and them. Um, Rippers. Yeah. Really good stuff. So when the, when the skate shop really wasn't making any money anymore, I went and um, worked as a private investigator for like three years. <laughs> I'm going to pause on that one. <laughs> Have you done that with your video career yet? Pause on that one. No, I, that's, uh, that's one thing I haven't dabbled in yet. So private, private investigator. Yeah. Um, Do tell, sir. So I met a guy um, and just, you know, through random conversation was like, was like, oh, what do you do? He's like, oh, I'm a, like a dispatcher at a PI company. And I was like, what do you mean? What is that? <clears throat> and he tells me, oh, we do a workers' comp fraud investigation. And I was like, that sounds neat. He was like, sounds oh. neat. <laughs> he was like, actually, we're, we're hiring right now. If you're interested, he said it as a joke. And I was all, actually, I have like a pretty rich video history and um, I have a lot of street smarts. Like, I might be perfect for this job. And he was I like, like following people. I was like, I've been filming people a lot. <laughs> so I just uh I went on a ride along with them like you would do for a cop or something yeah. and I went on a ride along and basically just lurked on this dude who was like a fraudulent workers comp claimant all day and what we did is we just show up at someone's house at like 6 or 6 30 in the morning and wait for him to leave or come out or wait for him to do anything maybe they'll come out and mow their lawn for you maybe they'll go uh play oh, your back hurts I am in there mowing the lawn huh? exactly that yeah. exactly that yeah. So what we would normally see is 99% of the people we would be dispatched on were actually fraudulent. And the reason the rate of us catching them is so high is because they've fucked up at some point and they've told someone who works at the office that they're like, oh, yeah, we've been doing, the softball team's been doing great, you know, on the weekends or, uh, hey, I joined a basketball league or bowling league, like whatever. I had but this they're guy, filing for a worker's comp. Yeah. Come on, and bro. all these people got hurt at work. I mean, there's they have medical, you know, paperwork that says no, you were actually hurt at work. But you yeah. get better. Yeah, now you're better. It's time to come back to work. So <clears throat> people get pretty bitter seeing you having a good time all week, making the exact same amount of money that you know. Oh yeah, I have to work for. Yeah. So they rat each other out at work. Um, some people's doctors will rat them out too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we would do is we just, you know, they give you like a soccer mom looking van, like a you know a newer model, yeah, town and country, like in town something and country, inconspicuous, or yeah, just tinted windows, simple and inconspicuous. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while to get over the creep factor, um, but at some point you get pretty brazen and you just fuck it, just one where the seat leans all the way back. I mean, what would, ha- what would you? It's funny you say that because when you get like to the spot in the morning, you usually lean the seat back, oh yeah, and then you yeah. crawl into the back. Yeah. And I'm, not, s- I'm not creeping on anything. I'm just resting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but don't, abs- don't mind me. Some pretty cool stories, like some pretty funny stuff. I well, think I bet, uh, you bet you when you're just sitting there watching human beings, you're going to see some funny shit. You see people be their worst and you see people be their best. Well, especially because they don't know you're watching. Right. So you see people when they don't. The real person. They don't realize anybody's looking. Like you see like the 10 year old kid on the street. Who like goes up to the cat and is like meow meow and then looks around and then like kicks the cat and like you little fucker like, what are you just doing kick, dude you just kicked a cat yeah or yeah. then you see the opposite right you see like um, a guy who is on workers comp and he seems okay like maybe he shouldn't be but he spends the whole day every day taking his kid to the park and like playing catch with him or like takes his daughter to her quinceanera yeah, like, or, damn it like I literally at one point was like am I gonna report right yeah i was like i love this guy this guy's awesome what's funny though is that dude knew you were following him maybe so he was like all right you see that van (laughs) that guy's watching me check this out (laughs) honey we're going to the park today oh man the worst the worst ones that we had were um when we had to follow cops or firefighters mostly cops um so cops get hurt usually hurt their back or they'll get injured um you know doing something active that cops do when they get a little round and they shouldn't yeah. be doing the active yeah. stuff anymore. And then they try to hop a fence. And then... Yeah, they get hurt hopping a fence, exactly. Yeah. So cops almost figure out that you're following them immediately because cops they're, have... They're cops. Gr- yeah, they have a greater range of... Yeah. Um, they're fucking cops. They're trained dude. for that. <laughs> they're, yeah, it's a gen- they have a higher general awareness, right? Yeah. So what happens is you're following them 
And then a normal guy, like a cement truck driver or whatever, like you're following him, maybe after day three, he'll like turn around and look at you weird and be like, am I being followed? Yeah. But cops don't. They don't give you any heads up that they no, know they, that you know. Yeah, they just know. What they do is they call their cop friends. Uh, like, and, hey, this van's following me. Can you pull him over? Yeah, I'll tell you right where we'll be. And then they like, they toss your van, they like, handcuff you on the ground and like, they're fully within their rights to do so because you're the suspicious person. So they just toss your shit and like they don't take you to jail. They don't charge you with anything. Yeah, they can't. They're just fucking with you. Yeah. Just letting you know. Mm-hmm. They're just letting you know. Yeah. So those look are what, look what we can do, bro. Those are a little sketch. Yeah. Those are a little sketch. Yeah, I wouldn't want to take those cases either. No. Um, so I, you did that for a few years? Like three years. Wow. And that was my primary. And it's a lot of hours. Did you carry a gun? No. Oh, no. I, I would. They encouraged us not to. I don't think it was against the law to. I don't, I don't know. But I've never been interested in guns until like maybe the last couple of years where yeah. I've started to think like. Maybe uh, I should have a gun. I don't know why I want one all of a sudden. Yeah. I like went to a firing range a few years ago in Vegas and like was like, oh, no, I get it. This is really fun. Yeah. Well, fun aside, I've been contemplating it as well. Mm. Uh, you have family now? I got a family now. Well, not only that, but like I know this sounds dumb, but like some stupid shit like say the zombie apocalypse actually does happen. I mean, I don't believe it is. But it just could be I'm the Republican saying, apocalypse. You know, let's like, say <laughs> some shit like that actually pops off and I'm like the one dude in America that like doesn't have a fucking gun. You're like, yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of, I, I kind of want some, oh, like my girlfriend's dad asked me at one point, uh, it's like, are you armed? And I was like, what a weird question. Am I armed? Not, not right now. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I didn't bring any My guns with me. And then I, I really look up to him and I really like him a lot. I'm like, oh, maybe I should be armed. Dave thinks I should be armed. Maybe I should be armed. That, I mean, that's, <laughs> that, that it, a question like that will like kind of <clears throat> put a, a series of questions into your brain. And yeah. someone just comes to say, hey, are you armed? I'll be like, mm-hmm. what's about to happen? Yeah. Was something about, did, did I miss something? Yeah. Like, we had been camping a lot and there's like oh, bears sure. and shit. And like, we like, had the little camper van that we built out. Yeah. Like, like you were saying, should, should I? Should I be? Do I do I need to be? Should I be armed? On. And then yeah. turns out he used to um he used to own a gun shop, <laughs> so he probably just asked. It's everybody. just a question. Yeah. Are, you Are you armed? armed? I got some. You're not. I got. I can, <laughs> I can arm you. Exactly. Well, I just bought a um I bought a house in Oak Park uh yesterday. Friday? That's why you're thinking you should be armed. So I'm moving. Yeah, I, I grew up. I grew up kind of around Oak Park, and I went to Sac yeah. Hyde. And um, I went to Sac Hyde too. yeah, you went to Sac Hyde. Yeah. What year did you graduate? Uh, 2005. Wow. Yeah. 1993, 12 years. You graduated in 93? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It was it was rough over there. It's probably rough over there when you were there. Oh, yeah. yeah it was, oh, yeah, it's it was just now starting to get better. Yeah. Just now. I never really had any problems, but, no? you know, there were always plenty of fights and, a lot of fights. you know, stuff like that going on. Someone well, drew, well, you're a quiet dude. You keep to yourself. Yeah. You don't cause no problems. Yeah. Don't start no shit and there won't be no shit. The skaters, yeah. you know, the skater group was always pretty, yeah. you know, just di- diverse and whatnot. And, and, and that's the general rule we all in the hood. Along. Don't start no shit. There won't be no shit. Yeah. Generally. I, any, you know what I, mean? you know, I think the, pro- the problem in 1993 is that there was only three skaters at the school. Yeah. Yeah. So we were weirdos. Yeah. And yeah. for whatever reason, I think I think I liked Mike Vallely or something. So I like shaved my head during the last oh, few years. Oh, bad move. Yeah, so bad move. stupid. Bad move. And then like. In that neighborhood, bad move. Yeah. And then I had like, like skate. Remember when you do like puffy skate shoes with a big puffy tongue and yeah. like white laces and black shoes. Like I wasn't paying attention yeah, and I was getting my ass kicked. Yeah, it was uh, it was real dumb. Yeah, it was real dumb. Well, did, that yeah. in that time, <clears throat> it was real explosive. Yeah, real explosive, and that area was at its worst. The gang activity was was real hot. Bloods yeah. and Crips in the same area, like yes. battling regularly. Well, and the whole uh, race, the whole race, race war, stuff, was race too. wars were going on. Basically, mm-hmm. like from Southern California, were leaking all the way up Yeah, uh, around that time, you know, between like 91 and 96, that era, it was like real touchy. You know, mm. like yeah. if you having a shaved head was not the right idea. Not super <laughs> smart. Not super no. smart. No. no. Um, I did, I did realize senior year that nobody could beat me up any worse than I was doing to myself on a daily basis skateboarding. So I started to get real cocky. And yeah. as soon as I was able to walk with my head high and my shoulders back, no one fucked with me anymore. Exactly. That's, that's the, yep. So advice for all you kids out there, keep your fucking head up. Yeah. That's, I mean, like I said, don't start no shit. There won't be no shit. So if you look like a target, you're going to get fucking, yep. you're going to get picked right out. Yep. Uh, if you, if you look like you might cause a problem, mm-hmm. if they tried to fuck with you, they, they, they probably won't fuck with you. Yeah. Depending, because I've always walked with my head high too, 
and some dudes are just gonna want to fuck with you. Yeah. <laughs> I think I narrowly escaped some yeah. shit last uh, last year. I was like, I was down in Midtown, like twenty twentieth and J Street, and I'd like, I don't know what I was doing down there. I was like popping into some store or something, and I was walking down the street. It was a little bit of a dark street, and it's like the sidewalk kind of came together real close, and there was like five five young guys, five young guys that were just took the whole sidewalk up and you kind of, you know, at some point I was like, these guys are probably 19 to 22. And like, you just, you check yourself a little bit. You're like, am yeah. I safe right now? Yeah. And should I, how, how aware should I be? Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to walk through these dudes right now and they're rowdy. They're pushing each other and talking shit as they're walking down the street. Like they're obviously already elevated at some level looking for, I don't know if they're looking for trouble, but I was immediately like my spidey senses are like, Hey, let's just be safe. Keep it cool. <laughs> Keep like, how am I going to walk through these dudes? And sure enough, like, I step to the left. So one of them is like, oh, I'm going to step to the left, see if he steps back. Like, oh, like, okay, so I'll step the other way. He steps the other way. I was like, all right, young man's getting a hard shoulder now. Thump. <laughs> I was just like, I got to get, I got to give this dude that little bit of yeah. check. Like, yeah. Eh. And I felt a little more comfortable because this is where I grew up. This is my area. Boom. All of his friends are like, Ooh, cause it spun him around. Yeah. And then, um, I just started walking. I just didn't say shit. I just started walking backwards and they were like starting to walk towards me. I like took off my hat slowly, put it in my pocket, took off my glasses, put it in my pocket, just kept walking backwards. The kid's like, what's up motherfucker? Like punch jumps up and like punches a sign to make some noise. And I was, I was just, just kept nodding my head and walking backwards. And I was just like, I like see looking you. at them, but walking backwards. Yeah. Just didn't speed up. Just like, Still look back, look back, like didn't say shit. And <laughs> I walked my ass straight into the first open business. <laughs> I was right. like, well, I better go inside and find some help. Yeah. Um, but it's weird. Had I been armed, would I have pulled that out? Like that seems very over the top. Yeah. Um, and who but wants? at the same time, there's five dudes that could, if they wanted to, they could cause some mortal fucking damage to you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's five dudes, no matter how old they are, unless you are highly trained to fight. Yeah, and have been in combat situations. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, totally. you're probably not going to take out yeah. five dudes. Yeah, you're I mean, not fucking Jack Reaper. I know a lot of a lot of people Jack like to Reacher. think like, oh, I hit that dude, I hit that dude, I hit that. No, I mean, five dudes are going to fuck your world up. You're not going to catch you, up. You might make two of them bleed. Yeah, if you know how to fight, you won't catch up. But if there's five of them, they're going to get you at some point. Yeah. So it's not unreasonable to make sure that you are safe and <laughs> try just, to maintain a. Don't fuck with me vibe till I can get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I think just like <laughs> advice for others, like don't be overly cocky, but be sure of yourself. Like, yeah, I mean, let them know that you're not you. You're gonna uh, give them a problem. You're not gonna take it in the ass. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. But this, this won't be a total win yeah. for you. But but also be aware that you're probably gonna lose. Yeah, like, you might cause them some problems. Yeah, and they might remember you for a little bit, but um, you're probably gonna lose, bro. I remember my first thing. I was, I was like, I need to take off my glasses, unless. You hit the first dude so hard that can shut it down. Shut down the conversation. Just, like, that really he bounces. That he bounces his head off the concrete. Those other dudes might be like, "Um, yeah, fuck you, buddy." <laughs> <laughs> and that's yeah. about it. You know, what I mean that that's a possibility. But how sure are you that you want to take that chance? One that you can knock that guy out, and two that his friends won't react like I'm oh, likely. To, we're gonna fuck this dude up. At know? this point, I'm likely to think I'm a lot stronger and faster than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing basketball a little bit lately, um, just to like, stay, in, to yeah. stay in shape. <sighs> yeah, and like I think I think that I'm like quick, yeah. and then I go to step, and I'm like, no, dude, you're old. Yeah. Like, you're slow. Yeah, you're over forty. Uh huh. And yeah. people are like, oh, dude, you still skate? I was like. I look like a newborn baby deer on my skateboard. Yeah. Like, what the I fuck? I mean, I'm I'm going to I'm going to turn 35 like next month and I'm very well aware that the fact that I don't skate on a very consistent basis. I still got it. I can still skate. I can still throw down some tricks, mm -hmm. but I'm very aware of the effort that it takes now versus the effort that it took. Yeah. Then, you know, I was 145 yeah. pounds when I was a pro skater. Now I'm like 196. Yeah. So I was a fucking toothpick. I'm not grossly overweight now, but the little bit that you're carrying, like what if you were, what if you were you again as a teen and someone handed you two 20 pound weights to yeah. do a kickflip? Yeah, you, ain't doing, <laughs> you ain't doing shit. You can't get this off the ground, man. Yeah. But uh, I watched some like Ben Margera shit recently. Oh dude, it's so crazy looking at it him. It makes skate. me so happy to see him like, like dude, look at your big old dude, sweaty so, dude just yeah. killing it. Like 
and, yeah. and having fun and doing it and like thinking, of, you know, I've never knew that guy in person, yeah. but to like, you can see his story as but a we, fan. We in knew a way. him. We, we knew him. You know enough you know, about him because yeah. his fucking life was a 24 hour a day show. Yeah. But to see that story of him like on Vice, I think I watched it. Yeah. Like just fucking skating. Like yeah, skating the mini ramp and shit. Like, yeah, fuck it, dude. dude. He looked like he was having more fun than I've ever had. And what do you, he went to like Barcelona or whatever yeah. and like so on those crazy banks yeah. and shit. That was gnarly. I got stoked. I actually, I went skating like immediately after watching. Yeah. That. Yeah. Seeing a guy like what's funny to me is watching a guy like that fall because uh, one thing that I think we don't think about that. I don't think I've ever thought about it. I just literally am thinking about it right now about watching, watching do like that fall because mm-hmm. as a skater, yeah, we can lose tricks. We can gain tricks, but that muscle memory is there. We know how to do a kickflip, yeah. but the muscle memory on how to tuck and roll and it's pop bad. back up disappears. Like it is gone. A hundred percent gone. When I fall now, when I fall, I fall slow. It's yeah. weird. I fall in this weird slow yeah. Lumpy, and there's roll. nothing you could do about it. <laughs> no, whereas <laughs> during your pro days, dude, you could like tiptoe down a rail and kick your board out and yeah. fucking hit and roll twice and pop back up and have your board in your hand at the same time, still running back up the stairs, all do a in, lot, all in one motion. You can do a lot. Now we're like fucking fall on a pop shove, it's like eight steps. <laughs> <laughs> I totally feel that. I totally feel that. But that just reminded me watching Bam because of his, his gut. You're yeah. not used to seeing that little, it's not even big, it's just. You're not used to seeing that on band. On him, yeah. You know, and a little bit of chub underneath. You're just like, oh, look, it looks like he's almost wearing a fat suit totally. kind of thing. Um, and seeing him fall just kind of like stiff. Yeah. And just like, you know. Yep. Oh, damn. Really fucking cool. <laughs> really fucking cool. <laughs> oh. Who else we got in that video? That was, um, was this, what was we were looking at, Jared Nevis or, or Jared Diaz. Yeah, dude. Um, JR. Dude, so many, so many fucking spots. So there's a handful of people from SAC yes. that I feel like should have been pro skaters and didn't have the opportunity um, for whatever reason. Maybe wrong time, didn't hang out with the right people. JR, I feel like, was somebody that should have been a pro skater. If I remember correctly, he got, I think he got flow from some companies. I know he was for Think at one point. Dude, li- freaking lip slide the Safeway rail. Yeah. Ollie, the Eureka double set. Yeah. I mean, that, uh, dude, you see that? We used to pass by that set, That's a big, that, that double set every day big. when we go to Epic. That we pass by that yeah. on our way up to work every fucking day. Yeah. I think Mako ollied that way long uh, time ago. The uh, the dude that I had the very first episode, mm-hmm. James Gray, mm-hmm. he fiftyed that. The just the flat part. Oh my god! Like that's gapped crazy. out fifty. Yeah. yeah, that's fucking nuts. Yeah, dude, <laughs> that is fucking nuts. Um, Silas, whose part we're watching right now, for a moment here, um, Silas was writing for Pal Peralta when he was filming this stuff. And near near the middle of us kind of finishing up this video part, uh, he got like an invitation to go on a Habitat road trip. And I remember he was like a little nervous about it. And uh, I had talked to him a bit about, I, I feel like I had a good eye for talent and I I did my best to put people in front of who they should be in front of to get somewhere. Yeah. And uh facilitator yeah, as much as i want to take credit for that i really do want to take credit for it but it's probably not as much there as i want there to be but silas was going to go on this road trip and i remember as i was going through some of the tricks that he had filmed for or that was we were going to put in thrasher video i cut out some like trick selection and i think it's important for as we talk about skaters who want to get somewhere your tricks your trick selection is really important yes you, you don't want like the Benihana in your part. Like it's something that is kind of a kook move, you know, like um, not saying that Silas did one, but there were some tricks in, in Silas's like body of video that I thought didn't enhance him as a skater and didn't enhance the part. So I was like, uh, let's not use this one. Let's not use this one. I remember before you went on the trip, with the habitat dudes, he was like, he was like, "Uh, I'm really nervous. Like, I don't, I, I, I would love to ride for Habitat, and I kind of think that's what this trip's about. It's like, what should what should I do? Like, I mean, how do I deal with this? And I remember telling him, I was like, only do tricks you think are really awesome. Like, don't don't do busy tricks. Like, yeah, don't just get as many tricks as you possibly can. No, like, be really selective about what you want to try. You're going to be on this road trip. Interesting. You, like, if you need to skip a day of throwing down something amazing, because you, I mean, don't. Like save your save yourself for the best stuff. 
Because huh. you can get wrecked on a trip like that on the first day, and then you have the whole rest of the trip you're just going to be injured or Worthless, sore. Yeah. yeah. Um, I always would tell skaters that, like, first day out, like, hey, like, we're going on a two-week tour. Like, we're not going to giant gaps this week. Like, we're going, let's keep our eye on stuff where we can be really productive and have fun. Yeah. We can make special trips back to things that we're going to get hurt on. Yeah. And I don't want to take the fun out of skating because there's a lot of spontaneity there where you, you can't say no to that stuff. But yeah, it's just there's a level of professionalism to it, I think, that starts to come into play. Plan your plan your attack to some some extent. Uh, that was the ender, right? Oh, gap yeah, to gap to Backsmith and Vacaville High. Yeah, um, I totally agree with what, like, it's weird. I, I disagreed with the first part. I mean, not disagreed, but I, I, I took the opposite approach to the first part of what you said and the same approach to the second part of what you said, where um, I've never told skaters to, like, be selective about what tricks they do. I, like, I've always told guys to, like, like just do as many tricks as you want, like, mm-hmm. as many as you can. Just start with little ones and just start, just move, work your way up so you get used to the gap or the ledge. Or just get as many tricks. Don't, as a filmer, too, because uh, I was a team manager and a filmer for a minute, and I tell my guys, don't let me leave the spot without something because we need stuff for Instagram. We need stuff for this. We need stuff for that. Not every trick is going into your full part. Yeah. But see, and and this that, is different I, for me because I, I we I, only had VHS tape to go to. I think that was the wrong approach for me though. Think so? Because obviously I'm not that anymore. I'm mm. not those things anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, my, grow. and my company didn't really work out. Mm. And I re- reflecting back on it, you always look at like, what did I, what do you think? I, what do you think you did wrong? You know, what, what, what happened there? What, you know, why didn't I succeed? What, you know, and uh, I think you know, I took the wrong approach to a lot of things where I didn't necessarily let it happen organically because I was uh, on a timeline. I wanted things to happen on a certain timeline. So I thought that X, Y, and Z is going to make this happen on this timeline, but you can't really force something that we consider an art. You know, it's like hard to force skate, especially, you know, skaters are going to do things th- uh, not only that they want to do, but they're going to also do it mostly when they fucking want to do it. And you, you have know. to consider that, some of these skaters, you don't have to tell them anything because they're already doing it all right. That's the other thing is I think I'm some guys I talk too much to. Yeah. Like uh, one dude in particular, Zach Shaner. I don't know if you know who he is. He's been on twice now. Um, he's like one of like my favorite dudes to skate with, one of my favorite dudes to like just hang out with. He's mm-hmm. rad, rad dude, uh, lives up in Orville. He rode for me for a good minute. Um, that's actually him on the movie poster. That's him skating. He had the ender in that. Uh Worked really hard, skated really well, but he um, he said that the, some of the things that I told him that he needed to do uh, that put too much pressure on him, yeah, and it made him kind of block up a little bit, and and was like really hard for him, and couldn't you know he wasn't having as much fun, hmm. and that show a little showed a little bit in his skating because now as as, hate, as much as I hate to say it, he's not with me anymore. And he's like growing weight, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> his skating has gone to a no, whole nother fucking level. Yeah. And I have nothing to do with that, you know, and, right. and no offense to that. Like I love watching him skate cause mm-hmm. he's fucking amazing. But I felt like w- under my wing, quote unquote, I might've been holding him back cause I was like in his ear too much. Maybe and I should have just been like, dude, what, what do you, what do you want to do? Like whatever, uh, dude, fucking yeah. do it. Let's just fucking burn and fucking whatever. Cause yeah. that's the kind of, that's what pumps him up. Not like, hey, dude, you need to make a list of tricks. You need to make a list of spots. So that way when I come out to film, it's fucking boom with business. Fucking, that's like, no, nah, dude, no, nah, we're homies. Like, let's just go fucking kick it. And then we want to go skate. Like, that's yeah. how I should have approached it. So and I like, think it would have been like much better for him. Yeah. And the attitude that people had about us might have been different because I think I presented a very like business, hmm. you know, like we're here to fucking work. Like, like you guys, you know, boom, boom, you know, like, there must have been something enjoyable for you in that role that you, it was my job. Yeah. I was getting paid for it. Okay. So I looked at it as like, yes, I'm having the best time of my life, but I need to have, uh, results mm-hmm. so that I can continue to pay my rent. Right. And it was the wrong approach, I think, because I was very business like this. Yeah. This sometimes what, fucking business, sometimes bro. what is motivating you? takes over in the spot. Where and I don't think I saw that at the yeah. time. You know, I was just looking at it like, ah, we're, we're, we're partying. What are you talking about? Yeah. Like, like, you know, we smoke, we drink, we fucking, we, we hang out. But no, and I was like looking at how I was talking to my skaters. I was like, okay, guys, you got to get this. We got to do this. We're going to go to this spot. It sounds okay. like you were so, talking to them all the same way, but much, you needed yeah. to customize yeah. your coaching yeah. to how they could hear it. Hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. 
<laughs> there's a there are some people in some people I've filmed for a long time that I I feel like I learned some coaching from. Yeah. Um, working with Ryan Gallant, I had to I had to like <laughs> I had to work with him differently than I would like working with Brian Anderson. That guy's or, amazing. Ryan Gallant is amazing. He's so he's the best person. He's the best skater. I mean, I know we have him queued up in the alone video here. Uh, five of the tricks that are in his part happened within five minutes the first day I met him in the rain. Like, it's like, yeah, we flew this kid in from Boston. He's supposed to be really good. Go so film good. him. Like, yeah. he wasn't even friends with the dudes on Expedition, and he was like on the team. And so was, you can't we were out it, filming dude. before he had met everybody. It was so, so insane. So my t- just my two seconds with Ryan Gallant. Uh, he they came into Epic to do it like a demo. Yeah. Um, and I'm literally I'm I'm skating the four set skating the four stair, I'm skating the hub as he's skating the rail. I'm just like standing there with Ryan Gallant, like, holy shit. You know, <laughs> it just was a like, big deal. Like, oh, and he's to- totally cool, like chatting with us, whatever. And I'm like watching him, like not, not creepily watching him, but, but noticing that he is getting like unbelievably hyped on what's going down, you know, and like somebody just like, kick flip the four stair and he's like oh shit like giving him hell of props like dude that was so clean like and then he just goes and kick flip kick flip front nose the rail first try <laughs> sounds and like, just, like him. comes back up and he's like ah eh. that sounds and like, like him. bro you literally just did the best trick like that's ever been done here or like in this whole session and yeah. like you're like whatever about it and uh dude just like ollie the set and you're like oh that was sick bro that's the best kind of people to have around yeah that was that kind of shit stands out to me when i see um a pro or and even somebody who's on a certain level get like genuinely hyped or excited for somebody who's doing something that's good at, at their level. Well, that's you know even I mean? that's even like Jeff Tillerson at a session. Yeah, dude, right? hype. That fool just hypes. He makes everybody hyped. Yeah, and he, I'm remembering you know? this from when I was a kid. Like I haven't skated with Jeff in 20 years, like, more than 20 years. Well, he's the same. Yeah, but I, I know he is because <laughs> I've seen him at like a <laughs> see him getting hyped at like a party at Boulevard Skate Shop <laughs> a yeah. couple weeks back. <laughs> it was like hyping a party up. Like, dude, those are the kind of people you just want around yeah. because they make life better. That's a good way to put it. They do. They, they make life more enjoyable. More interesting. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of like, they punctuate things that happen that wouldn't normally get punctuated. It's just like, yeah, whatever happened. But yeah. no, but that was cheered on. Yeah, but that's that was my two seconds with Ryan. So, sorry, <laughs> sorry carry on. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I had much more than two seconds with Ryan. I am... <laughs> I think of him as, uh, um, you know, I spent a year of my life with him sleeping on Troy's floor, like yeah. <laughs> literally like sleeping on a carpet floor with like a sleeping bag. Yeah. And that's like what it's like to be a pro filmer, right? Like yeah, you're dude. just at, at Troy's house on the floor or oh, at Shani's house on the leather couch, you know, it smells like it's cigarettes. A, it's a special, it's like a special bond you have with somebody that you film the part with. And I don't think, well, I know there aren't a lot of people who have that, uh, that it, that knowledge to know what that feels like. Cause there, I mean, yeah. there's only a certain amount of filmers. There's only a certain, you know, certain amount of full lengths that have really been put out. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know there's thousands, but that's only with how many skateboarders there are. A very select few has have, have had that filmer skater full part year of our life. Totally. Relationship. Yeah. You know, and I've had the pleasure of having that with, a, um, I've done three full lengths, and each one had a different kind of a different group of people yeah. that I spent about a year of my life with. It always seems to be about a year. About a year. Yeah, I think like 10 the, months to a year. That's probably the like shelf life for much of the tricks that you might do. Yeah, because you know? like, after about a year, you, you, you're you moving on. Yeah, so or like, maybe some, I heard someone else is going to do it. We better hurry up and get it out there. Yeah. Um, I, had a, I had a really special portion of like six to eight months where I filmed Brian Anderson and like wow. pre-Toy Machine. Yeah. Um, like half of his toy machine video was uh, half of his part was like sponsor me video footage that happened at Sutter. And <laughs> I wish I, I wish I even know how to, I'm sure I have it on high eight, but um, ended up giving a lot of the original stuff to Jamie Thomas when they made toy machine video. Cause you couldn't do multiple dubs. You had to give them yeah, the original the tapes because yeah. of the degradation and quality. But some of the stuff Brian did at Sutter, he did lines where he would all over a full size table and then back lip or front lip the whole next table. And these are just shitty wooden tables. These are yeah. wooden picnic tables that no one skated as tables. Like no. you sat at them and drank your Pepsi. Yeah, especially because like, they had those big round knobs on top. Yeah. That you, if you, you're you going to hang up on yeah. those. Yeah, well, if you those. remember the demos we did at Sutter, we set big ramps up to ollie over the tables. Yeah. 
Brian used to Do crack ollies yeah. over the tables. <laughs> and then he was, when I met him, um, he had moved to Sacramento on like a, let's try it, living in California for a minute. And he, uh, he and his friend Jason Case, they subletted my room while I would like go on trips. Like wow. I would be on skate trips and I had these guys that, they were good friends with Judd Hertzler and Judd was my roommate. So he was like, hey, these guys will rent you your room. You lived with Judd? Oh, yeah. I lived with Judd a lot. Dude, you, many your years. history just keeps going. Oh, dude, we, I lived just with like Judd we keep for digging. a long time. <laughs> yeah, Judd and I got, were on Shaft together. Shaft skateboards. I, he's muscle. another dude I'd like to have in here. I've had uh, minimal uh, dealings with him. Uh, he's interesting, yeah. dude. He's got good stories, too. Yeah. He's, a, he's another guy who hypes a session yeah. and really like punctuates all the events. But Brian, um, Brian was incredible. He had he was working as a cook, like like a chef. Yeah, right? I, I think just as like a line cook somewhere in oh. town, and he wasn't skating. And then at some point, just got a cruiser board, like a big Think Dwayne Peters board, which was kind of like a big pool board. Wait, so he didn't come out here for skateboarding? He just came out here? He just kind of came out here. Oh shit! He didn't come out here to skate. He just kind of well, let's go live in California with some friends and interesting. Um, <laughs> he was skating at Sutter one day and he's like throwing frontside blunt slides across the tall block, like six feet of frontside blunt when no one was even doing that kind of stuff. And I was like, <laughs> holy shit, this guy that I've been like renting my room to for six months happens to be really good at skating. Yeah. And I never knew it. Yeah. Uh, and I was always filming and I was like, hey, let's just film some stuff. Like, it'll be fun. And he just starts cracking off all these different things with this big, weird board. And he is longtime friends with Donnie Barley from uh, where they grew up. And yeah started putting some footage together for fun no intent just for fun let's film stuff we film everything damn and donnie um donnie had come up and we, like wanted to skate with brian and hang out and uh, we got his tape over donnie showed it to ed and jamie and they were like well we'd like to meet him we'll see and sure enough like right before they were gonna meet him um i took brian to san francisco and i called up bryce knights and was like I was like, hey, my friend Brian wants to front blunt have a hideout today. We're gonna head over there if you wanna if you if you're free. He was like, Oh, actually I'm free, yeah, I'll come over. And I think he thought nothing of it. Like, who's gonna do that? And sure enough, fucking just went and got fucking the sequence. Brian Anderson's gonna do that. Yeah. And that was like that's like the day where everything happened for Brian. But you me. shot that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that was also a big deal for me to have filmed a trick in the toy machine video. Like wow. I was so stoked. And that's an, that's dude, that's like an iconic That's a big moment. That's, that's like a really I mean, big moment. I don't know anybody who hasn't seen that clip. Yeah. Like probably if you think about who Brian Anderson is, like that might be the first trick yeah. that you think of. Um, so that was cool. You filmed it. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And that's not all he did that day. And I have tape. I, nothing ever. Came, I mean, he's, the shit Damn. he did that day was so crazy. He did so many things. But I don't know. Good dude. Really good dude. He's got a great story too. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, awesome. Yeah. His story. I mean. Everybody's heard yeah, by now. Everybody's heard that by now. <laughs> He's yeah. fucking killer. But that's crazy, dude, that you shot that. That's like... yeah. And I was um, I was riding for a company called Arsenal at the time. Yeah. And um, I think that same day, I got back to one eighty nose grind down high behind out. Mm. I was like, right. it was a big day for us. It was yeah, a good day. yeah. It was a pretty good yeah. day. It was cool. That's just rad. Good shit, dude. Just... Some of the standout things that I I remember shooting. Since this is about that ender, I think about like what are some of the big things. Um, I don't know if you could get it up on the screen quick, but um, if you look up Sodi, uh, John Cardiel, could run you through that about what I think is about the best ender of all time. There it is. Um, John, of course, we're going to get a YouTube commercial. We, oh, nobody at home gets to see that. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll fade in right and now. Um, <laughs> so... We had to make this. Um, I got hired by Thrasher to make this uh, Sodi video. They wanted to yeah, dude, hype up everybody. That, oh my god, that is in that rail is. This is the end of your target. Yeah. yeah. If anyone lives near Sacramento and you want to just trip out, go down to the mm. Wong Center. It's the downtown J Street, First and J, dude. and check out this rail. I I stopped counting the stairs long ago. It's probably seventeen or twenty. Yeah. Um, it's all, a, all hail. All hail. So this rail is a skinny black piece of metal, and it's sharp. Um, it's long, and it's wobbly. And <laughs> the beginning of it has a concrete pillar. It Like, it starts at the 
beginning in of the, a starts in the middle of a pillar. Yeah, so you can't like get on the very very beginning of it. You have to kind of you have gap, to gap out kind to of it. gap to it. Like it's not a technical gap, but when you skate it, unless you want to smash your face on the fucking, right, you, you can't approach it. Yeah, normally. you kind of have to hit it at an angle. I mean, that's not like I've hit that, but I've been there. I've yeah. seen it. But you, you, you would hit it if you could get it. If I. If, <laughs> Yes, if, would hit it. If I had the balls to hit that, I would. Hit um, it. So a little bit more about this spot. Um, what you don't see is that there's no runway. It's grass up there. Um, so we had to bring four sheets of plywood um, to make a runway. There's sidewalk right yeah, up I to say it. There's, there's sidewalk. There's there. sidewalk, but you it's only eight feet of sidewalk, so you can't push to it. Yeah, not enough to hit a 20 stair. Right. So we, John brought plywood, and we set it down and... You know, it's imperfect. Whatever. We roll over plywood and it's like yeah. stacked like duck, duck, yeah. duck. Like you're like duck, duck, duck. And you feel those. And then you're going fast enough. He runs across a busy street, throws his board down, ollies up a curb, duck, duck, duck across the plywood. <laughs> duck, gap, duck. <laughs> yeah, gap out to front board. Um, the only other person who I ever yeah. saw skate this rail was uh, Andy Cesarevong. And he tried to board slide it. And I don't think he ended up getting it. Yeah, I don't, um, I've never seen anybody. I don't think he got it. But John got it. And this was uh, early in the day. Some, it was uh, summer. It's probably like 11 a.m. Um, John, about seven tries on this thing. And I edited in a couple of the landings because I thought it was important. This wasn't filmed by multiple people. This was just me and my camera. Oh, you're just changing angles just changing for the tries. Yeah. yeah. When, when yeah. the trick's big enough, you can cheat multiple angles. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, well, yeah. if he makes it to the bottom, I can cut to a different landing. Yeah. So I was like bouncing around. I wanted to fish eye and then a couple long lenses and... Sure enough, there's a pole at the bottom that he has Smash, to dodge. Smashes into once or twice, the, maybe. Yeah, once or twice. <laughs> um, the ground is slick brick. Yeah, so looks like it. So you yeah. have to land perfectly straight. Or you're slipping out. Or you're sliding out. So he got it in just a couple of tries. And <laughs> as soon as he landed it, as soon as he landed it, we're like, yeah. And we look and we hear this other voice saying, yeah, like out of the corner. And we're like, who the fuck is that? And we look over and Donnie Barley has just rounded the corner on foot with like a big backpack. He like just stepped off the train arriving in Sacramento. <laughs> he turned a corner and sees that and yeah. saw John board slide that as the first thing he oh, saw yeah. when he rounded the corner. Oh, Sacramento and he didn't was see, crazy, bro. Yeah. Didn't see the tries. Only saw the make, like rounded a corner, and yeah. that's the first thing you see is John Cardiel coming down this lane. <laughs> that's got to be a weirder story for Donnie Barley than it is for anyone here. Like, did he? Yeah. Did you know if he already knew John? But they had met for okay. sure. Because that'd be weird if he had been out. It'd be weird if he didn't know John at the time. He was just like, "Fuck is that guy?" <laughs> <laughs> and then he meets him, and then he's like, "Oh shit, it's John Cardiel." Yeah, oh, this shit. is the gnarliest ender I've ever filmed for sure, um, and it's one of the gnarliest enders I've ever seen. Dude, it's fucking... Oh, oh he's on that rail for so long. Dude. That's something to get hurt on right front there. Front board, Ooh. that's so long. You can get real hurt. I mean, the only other better front board... Arto had some I was just going to say, like, Arto. That's, yeah. like, the only other guy that could... Like, sit on him like that forever. Just oh. hit the gnarliest. Oh. Yeah. And Alfonso Rawls, actually. Yeah. Alfonso Rawls has some crazy front boards. I mean, there's been a lot of good front boards, but... But, yeah. phew, dude. That's an... Yeah, that's the best ender in my, in my experience. You have filmed some serious shit. I have been lucky to be in the right spot for some fucking crazy stuff. Like some serious shit. Yeah. Um, and I think about it sometimes. I was kind of done with this stuff when I was doing the Flat Spot Skate Shop. And all the, all the good pro skaters had moved away to L.A. Omar, Stefan, Bebo, they all moved to L.A. How come so, you didn't follow? Um, I, f I was sick of it, dude. Yeah. I was honestly like... You didn't want to get more immersed into it? I was just like, great, my guys made it. I was like, my homies made it. Like, good for them. Now, looking back on it, uh, at where you're at now, mm -hmm. um, do you wish you would have... I mean, obviously, you, you probably enjoy your life. You, you seem yeah, like pretty, great. pretty happy, dude. Yeah, I'm stoked. Um, you married? Uh, no. 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 I got a very serious girlfriend I just bought a house with. No. Well, okay. So so then you're, you're happy in your personal life? Yeah, things are good. Um. But, you know, looking back on it, um, do you I mean, do you regret? Not I won't say regret because whatever. But do you wish that maybe you would have gone down to LA and like like kind of sucked it up, and then you could be still in the industry filming now? You know what Definitely I mean? Like, not. No. Definitely not. No. You're 
Um, and I think that my assumption is some other filmers that were never pro skaters that were really good at filming, I think maybe that are still doing it, like I hope that they're not limiting themselves to that being the whole story of their lives by doing that one thing forever. Yeah. Um, and continuing to probably barely make enough to get by. I would hope that they would take everything they learned and try it elsewhere because you can actually apply the same work ethic and the same techniques. Yeah. And well, a, a lot of dude like Chris Ray and Ty, they're and branching like, out. Yeah, they're they're making it in the mainstream. Exactly. And yeah. I would hope that that would be pe- how people see the path. And I would hope that that's what they would do. Like, yeah. Um, well, that's what I did. Yeah. I started with skateboarding. Right. And now I'm a full time photographer, videographer, editor. Good. We're all kinds of random different shit, yeah, but yeah. that's how I make my living. You so know, you're like, a creative. Yeah. I, I make, I make yeah. my money with a camera or a computer. Yep. Um, and I have for the last, you know, six years, mm-hmm. um, you know, we've got two kids, got a wife. Yep. She doesn't work. She's stay at home, stay at home mom. Cool. And I'm able to support all of us with a camera in my hands. That's fantastic. And that started a hundred percent from skateboarding. Yeah. Um, it sounds like, I don't know a lot about your history, but it sounds like you've by default ended up in a lot of project management roles where you're just like, oh, I have to own this entire experience for this brand or this company yes. or this person. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you you learned you learned how to do that. And yeah. I learned how to do a lot of different things. And that will put you anywhere. That will seriously, you can go wherever you want with that. Yeah. And so far, there really hasn't been an avenue that um, I can't, that I haven't handled. You know, like um, I know I haven't shot everything, yeah. but um, every job that's come my way, uh, I, if I didn't know how to do it, I just figured it out. Yeah. Uh, so you're a say yes guy, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm a yes man for sure. Yeah. Like, you say like, yes. Like, definitely. Hey, can you, Um. Uh, do you think you could? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. How much? Yeah. I'll get right back to you. Mm-hmm. And then I'd go figure out how to. Who is this? Yeah, <laughs> how do I figure out how to do it? Yeah. How long is it going to take me to figure out how to do it? Yeah. Can I figure out how to do it? Okay, I got a price for you. So your next step? Yeah. Not knowing anything else about you is how do you hire that workout when you're busy? That's what I'm working on right now. Ta-da! And um, I, uh, I've, I've already hired somebody. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I used interns on a pretty regular basis, even while filming, even while producing the Thrasher videos. Um, there was a guy named Joe Huerta. Yeah. I think I think Jeremy talked about him and his thing. Uh, Joe was a filmer from SAC, young kid. Um, I met him at SAC City College. I took a Final Cut course at Sac City College because I was thinking maybe I would pick up something I hadn't known yet because I was self-taught. Yeah. Sure enough, I picked up a lot of technical stuff that I, I wish I had learned earlier. And I met Joe in that class. And actually, he was a skater kid and he was all into skating. And I was like, dude, like, I have all these contributors sending me tapes. Like, I would just be like, hey, Joe, uh, will you log and capture all these tapes? Yeah, there you go. I'll get you in the credits of the Thrasher. Yeah. Video. So and he would log down, all the tapes. Like, Fuck yeah. Yeah, I want to watch all the footage. I get so to watch like, the footage and my name gets in it? Uh-huh. Fuck yeah. So I had uh, my buddy Curtis Franklin. I had him uh, interning, and I had Joe interning at Thrasher. Yeah, I've, uh, Unofficially, I've, basically. I've had a few, uh, a couple of, like, intern-style employees that, that came, and came and went. Yep. Um, I had one guy that I've talked about before, Robert Hollis talked about him uh i had him and he was the kid's brilliant like fucking amazing and we started working together and i started using him for projects i started sending him on jobs and then he decided to uh better his life and go to uh, uh an architecture school mm. you know and like become something you know <sighs> fuck it come on these bro. people yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so he's i we still have contact but he's down yeah. in san diego um actually like being an adult you know so. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i just bought a house uh, this week i finally feel like i can check off an adult yeah mark. Like, yeah like, uh, i still feel like uh i'm i'm still not there yet i still feel like i'm uh faking it you know man yeah. um well you've got two kids yeah and um i've got none so it's all right it's all right i'm uh i'm on a do you do we plan to have I kids you think it I actually can't kids? have them oh um I broke all my insides doing oh. all the skateboard shit. Oh. So um, I've had so many traumatic slams. This is what my doctor tells me. Oh. Um, my There's a, a vein called the vena cava that is supposed to return blood to your heart. It's the main, it's the main like vein that returns blood to your heart. Um, 
there's valves and veins that have to close. So as you pump liquid up, a valve has to close so gravity doesn't pull it back down. Yeah. Well, I've broken a bunch of those valves in my chest from oh. like Uh-oh. breaking ribs, slamming on your face, slamming on your chest, yeah. um, and just jumping downstairs yeah, a thousand impact. times. Like, yeah. like you can damage it. It's a, it's a pretty large tube. It's like, you know, it's like a piece of plumbing. Um, so the blood doesn't return efficiently and it just like keeps my balls hot for all you listeners. Wow. <laughs> we just got real personal. We got hot balls over here. All right. So um, and it cook it cooks everything and makes yeah. It, oh, okay. So everything still works, but they just don't swim well. Ah. So they don't produce. They're sitting in a hot tub. They're lazy. That's what happens, they're right? Like they tell you back, kicking in yeah, the hot tub constantly, just smoking a blunt, just not constantly. Nah, I don't want to swim <laughs> out there today, bro. Yeah. So I've never had even an accident. Like oh. I've never had anything pregnant. So I think about like, oh, you can do adoption. Um, you can do in vitro. Yeah. Um, but I feel like I've been a kid until now. Like, I'm 43. I'll be 44 next month. So I'm pretty. Well, you look great, dude. I'm an adult. If I if Thanks, I do say, if I do say so myself, I w- if you That's asked good. me how old you were, I wouldn't have guessed 40s. Oh, good. Good, good. I mean, knowing your history, knowing how much older you were, I would you know say yeah, he's got to be at least you know. Yeah, the facts show you something. Um, but uh, but, but just if I just met you today, I'd be like, ah, I don't know, late 30s. Yeah. And I almost feel like I've raised a bunch of teenagers because I had a skate shop. Yeah, you have. You You own a skate shop for a while. We feel the same way from working at Epic. Oh, yeah. Babysitter all day. Yeah. Yeah. All day. Fucking all day, dude. (laughs) All day. Life advice. Life advice. How do you talk to girls? Yeah. Um, So Flat Spot, we had had a pretty solid crew of kids. It was uh, Sean Stout, Tristan, um, Brent, David Zoltar. He passed away in a way too young. I think he wasn't even 20 yet. Um, those are some of the kids that hung out at our shop all the time. Uh, and then JR, Abner, um, all the little homies that used to come around. That was like the, you know, they're all like 16, 17. They just got their driver's licenses. Yeah. They would come in and wait for the shop to fill up and then they all go skate, you know, yeah. like over and over again. So I feel like I have that had... That was the spot. That's what yeah. I feel like I had teenagers. I never had children, but I definitely yeah. had teenagers. Always yelling at them and shit. So. Yeah. One of my favorite things, um, two actually two really standout dudes from from the skate shop, uh, Sean Stout, who was a fantastic skater. He was critically a part of Flat Spot. He worked there as an employee. Um, he was really passionate about video and photography. And at that time, I had just been like, "Hey, this is kind of the I'm done filming." And I, but I had all the stuff. I was like, I had Final Cut, I had yeah, all the knowledge, I had the cameras and. And generator and lights and stuff. So I would just, just be like, here's the stuff, you guys. Go make the flat spot video. Like, go go make videos. Like, film each other. Like, see where it goes. So eventually, they start filming each other, and then I get to, like, watch that stuff grow yeah, and watch so cool. them get good. And, like, yeah. you can take... Like, watch them go through all the shit that you went through. It's like, really fun to watch, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like, how cool is that? That, yeah. that I'm not the end of the generations. Like, they just keep going. Sean ended up um, really getting into filmmaking and um, lived in a few different, lived in LA and around down south and moved to New York. And sick. He ended up being the, um, he was like a media director for uh, Complex Magazine, which was like Rockefeller Center, like, you know, Dope. probably the 20th floor and without, in Manhattan. And without you just giving him that equipment, I just, I he, think he wouldn't have had that spark. Like, I don't you know what I mean. I don't know how much I had to do with it, but I I know that somewhere in there I was like, here's what motion graphics are, and here's yeah. what you know, like here's how you import footage and how to keep it organized. So I feel psyched when I see that kind of stuff. And he's since even moved on from then. He he works independently in L.A. now, and he makes his living as a creative, like you do. He does yep. projects for people that, at this point, I think he's even picky about his clients, which is a really sweet spot to be in. Yeah. And then a few years ago, I noticed um, I had been not looking at much skating, and I started looking at skating again. I was like, damn, like Tristan is so fucking good. So good. <laughs> and I didn't even know like where, like where what is a pro skater like these days. I was paying very little attention, and I saw... It's he, off the charts. I saw him skating at some contest in Europe, and I was like, is Tristan pro now? Like, I don't even yeah. know. And I was like, fuck, these kids have gotten so good. I'm so happy for them. Dude, Sacramento has a crazy batch. Yeah. A crazy batch. Yep. I didn't even, I'd never even heard of Miles Silvis until he was like on the cover of a magazine. Yeah. Like I didn't even see that coming. Like, I don't know who that kid is. Yeah, nobody did. And then I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm a fan. 
Nobody did except for the <laughs> except for the people that skated the contests with him or really? that were around him. They knew, okay. but he was uh, he wasn't like uh yeah. Oh shit! Finally, everybody know. Oh, this kid's no. All of a sudden, it was just like, whoa. Yeah. I mean, for me, I, I didn't know who he was. He had a sequence in Trans World where he front crooked, front crooked uh, the whole DMV rail. Really. And it was Damn. a sequence in Trans World, and All I was right. like, I know that rail. So who's that guy? Hmm. Oh shit! And then um, I ran into him. I, f- I met him somewhere, yeah. but you know, but it, just that was like the first time I saw him. I was like, oh shit, damn! That, yep. I've been to that rail. That is fucking crazy. Yep. But all those those Fofa kids were awesome. Like uh, Jesse or Goober, whatever they call him. Like he used to come in flat spot with the homies, yeah. um, Mika, and those were the dudes I remember. They were like, they were like the newest rad dudes. As I was like getting really sick of babysitting. <laughs> <laughs> Working my way into like, well, okay, I need to pay rent. All, all the, uh, all those dudes, they're a fine crop of skateboarders. Sick, in, right? In Sacramento now, they are yeah. doing big things, and Good. they've all put Sacramento on the map. I mean, people, yep. people know what Sacramento is now. They yep. know what we're about. They, I mean, whereas before we've always had rippers. Yeah. I mean, fucking John Cardiel's from here. You're from here, dude. Fucking, you know what I mean? Like, there's some good dudes. We got Omar. We got, dude, we had Sam, <laughs> Sam Cunningham. Let's go way back. Rick we've Windsor. Got, Windsor, yes, yep. fucking dude, yep. little Ryan Parsons, yeah, that kid, what, that kid fell off hard though. He um, has had a challenging experience throughout life. Yes, um, he has not had it easy. He is, he has had a, he has not had an easy go of it. Uh, some of it not his fault, some of it his fault. Um, but he is still kicking and breathing and skating. Um, I see stuff on, you know, I see little video things here and there pop up on social media. And he was so good, though. He was smooth. At such a young technical. age. Um, food. We, he rode for Santa Cruz. I've toured yeah. with him. Yeah, I know. Um, oh, I know. He, he was the, he was a year, a little bit younger than me. And I remember being like, dude, what the fuck? This kid's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So good. And, and just, just like, he had no support. That's, what, no that's support. what I hear. I don't really know him, but that's what I hear is that there was, there was nothing for him. To, no help for him anywhere. Yeah, I, I, I like carry some responsibility. I, I kind of like, I remember being like mean to him, and I wasn't even mean to that many people. And I, yeah. I remember he would sometimes bring out the worst in me, um, and I still feel bad about it. Like we would be on tour, and he'd be being a kid, yeah, doing shit the kids do that get you yeah. pissed. He would always push it a little further than a. Well, because he, he didn't have anybody telling him what the limits were at home. I think that was it. Yeah. That's what I hear anyway. Sorry. I yeah. Don't, I don't want to talk about people. Like yeah. That. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember him being a, ri- a ripper, you know, just, but I can really tell good. you that, um, from what I know about Ryan, he's probably doing a little bit better than he was last year. And, um, he's still skating and he still rips and he's, he's welcome to hit me up anything, anytime to well, say hello and well, hang out. Well, that's good to hear. That's yeah. Good to hear. That's, yeah. He's got, he's got heavy beef with people in town. Um, heavy beef with, Pro skaters, Uh-oh. a lot of shit talking back and forth. Uh-oh. Um, we don't need to get no, into it, we but don't I, like, we don't like that. Remember, out there, kids, keep your friends friends. Yeah, just don't talk shit. Yeah, and don't, don't talk shit. Don't do things to each other either, or don't lie. Be a good person. Yeah, That's, you know. Yeah, and some ugly shit out there sometimes. Yeah. Well, dude, I think that might be a uh, good good uh, An episode. That might yeah, might be a good way to wrap it up on there. Yeah. Telling people to be uh, be a good mm-hmm. person. Yeah, be uh, kind to each other. Yeah, shake somebody's hand and uh, give somebody a smile out there today. Absolutely agree. Um, yeah. Don't kook yourself. <laughs> Just the, adv- you advice do. from an OG pro: Don't kook yourself. <laughs> if you're gonna do anything today, just don't kook yourself. Yeah, totally, totally. Write that on your bathroom mirror and look at it every morning. Don't kook yourself. Cool. Hey, thanks for um, bringing me on. Thank you for bringing people on that. I've never heard of that are super interesting. Yeah. I've been watching these episodes and I'm like, tell me more. Dude, everybody's interesting. Everybody's got a story. Yeah. It's good. You shit. don't, you don't gotta be a pro to uh, be interesting. Yeah. And, and want people to get to know you. I mean, that's, yeah. we were actually just talking about that before you got here about how uh, we're just bring the everyday dude on. Like you don't have to be anybody. Like if you got a, there's some stories. You know, if, you, if, if, if we can have a conversation, you can come on my show. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how I, when I approach people, it's like, if, if you're cool, mm-hmm. then you can sit right there and we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Yeah. You know? Good, um, good. If you're a, if you're an asshole, I probably won't want to talk to you. 
<laughs> unless unless you've got cool stories, then we can. Uh, Very cool. Then we can let you be an asshole on camera and tell cool stories. But cool. Thanks for having me. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, uh, like for I sure. said in the beginning, I was fanning out a little bit. Cool. To, and I was excited <laughs> that you even like that you said yes. I was like <laughs> halfway expecting just a no response. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm I'm down. I've been okay. watching more um, watching more skating lately, and it's. Um, it's a lot of fun to see where stuff goes. I'm well, and I saw you were on our other um, uh, area podcast, the Sacramento area podcast, the Los, ah, yes. L- Losco project. Yep, definitely. Um, that that guy's cool. Uh, yep, he's yeah. fun. Yeah. He's an OG. I just he's... got to meet him the other day. Um, oh, cool. We were actually at Boulevard. Genuine dude. Yeah, that was first. We've talked, but that was the first time we like met face to face and like, cool. chatted for a while. Yep. But his show's pretty cool. So I saw you on there. I was like, oh man, maybe he'll come on. If he's, yeah, if he's willing to do that, maybe he'll, yeah. you know, so I'm still excited. a skate nerd at heart. Um, and just for anyone that's listening that likes old stuff, I, I run an Instagram account that that's is right, yeah. X21 stories. Um, we were going to go over on how to find you. So, uh, yeah. Um, X, the letter X two one underscore stories on Instagram has, I've looked through there. There's like some killer shit in there. Uh, just old footage, old pictures with, uh, stories. X21 is an old skate shop. That was in the, in Sacramento, if you guys don't know. Uh, but there's just some great old history, some uh, baggy pants and little wheels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, Lots of that. I'm using it as an... Lots uh, of big T-shirts. Yes. I'm using it as an outlet for um, stuff that, you know, when we were doing everything to VHS, the stuff that never made the VHS tape, I, yeah. I really still think people will enjoy seeing. Totally. That's, I mean, people love, people are searching for content just like that. Yeah. So if you, if you want to uh, take a... Um, a ride down, a, a, you know, memory lane. Go check it out. X21 stories. And then your personal, is this your personal? Yeah, this is like my uh, my photography account. So I, the other one is uh, Rafter. It's R-A-F-T-R. We'll put a link in the description if you want. But yeah. that's his other, um, that's like his photography Instagram. If you want to check out some of his artwork, um, some brilliant shots. Thanks, dude. Man. Some like really, you know, as a fellow photographer, some very brilliant shots. Thanks. Um, yeah. So um, you can check those out. Uh, we'll put some links to the descriptions some links to the videos in the descriptions that we watched. Um, anything else? You got anything else? That's it. I'll be watching whatever you guys put out next. Fantastic. I'll be stoked Fantastic. to see whoever else you have on. All right. We've been about that ender. You can find us on all platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, yeah. iTunes, SoundCloud. Film or, some enders. Get out here. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, we want more, more guests. So if you want to be on the show, hit us up. Don't be, don't be scared. Hit us up. Uh, I've been your host, Keith, audio wizard, Mr. Kim, and we're out. Peace. Oh.